put the sound in. Dude, I don't think like your description. Oh no, never mind. Get those tin cans on your head. <laughs> hey guys. Episode 70, 70. Um, 70 on the T die. Final Fever Podcast. Hey guys. Hey. It's back. Um action packed episode today uh we have a super special guest coming right up but before we get to that hopefully uh, more action packed than that race yeah hopefully more <laughs> um that hungry race uh, but it was great to, to go out to see it again at uh, betty's we want to thank again to all the folks at betty's yeah were, lots of new faces that was fantastic yeah. wow yeah. that was what a good what a good response and i didn't yeah. even put posters up for this one no around around betty's but that's a, they were calling me concerned because they thought that we weren't going to show up uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh but no yeah thanks to everybody that both daves that show up <laughs> yeah. and everybody else uh good to see everybody even though it wasn't the, maybe the most exciting of races mm -hmm. Uh, I got, I, you know what? I'm kind of glad that we didn't do this show yesterday because I was like out for the count by the yeah. end. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe went too heavy on the bone shakers. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> I was hungry at the Hungarian race. Oh, yeah. I don't That's think I ate enough. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so I guess uh, with a further ado, I guess we can uh, now turn to our guest. Is the right now is. Uh, Special guest here today, Curtis Robinson. Hello. Hello. Hey. Curtis, hey. you there? Good afternoon. Hey. Good evening. Yeah, I'm just going to turn you up a little bit. Keep on talking, bud. Hey. Hey, man. How's How you guys going? Been? Good. You can hear us uh, clear. You can see us. Let's make yeah, yeah. Can you guys fine? Okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, one quick thing, I do apologize in advance uh, uh, to our audio listeners and viewers and, and Curtis to you too. There is always a bit of a lag because we're doing this over broadband and uh, the connections aren't okay. always the best. So we do apologize in advance if, if we got any technical difficulties, stay tuned. We will try to sort them out. Uh, but other than that, Curtis, how are you? Yeah, I'm very good, thank you. Oh, actually, you we, should, we should probably introduce you. So our guest right now is uh, Curtis <laughs> Robinson, like you said, the uh, writer of a popular article on the on, on the on the finances of F1 called the uh, battle for F1's billions. That uh, I believe was was your last year paper at uh, a university. It was, yeah. And and it went quite well in the end. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, it went pretty well. I got a you I got a first for it. That's which a, is, uh, you know, in the top rank of marks. So. That's amazing. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, yeah, I was quite, dude. I was after that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and from what I like, from what we understand, like just the the writing of the paper from the beginning was a bit of a journey, and 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 the the, the good people of the internet had a hand to play in in making it the <laughs> success that it was. Yeah, well, it it started off um, in our in my second year of university. It's the the module that it was for um, started two years ago and that's when we had to start planning it and get our ideas for what we were going to write and um, I'm quite a big Formula 1 fan so I thought well, not, not any many people in my course were they're all doing football so I thought I'd do Formula 1 <laughs> nice. um, but the only problem is is that you needed at least three inter like first hand interviews with people with knowledge on the subject that you're writing about Right. And obviously with Formula One, it's it's hard enough for you know established journalists to get interviews anyway, let alone a random student from a university. Yeah. So <laughs> a little it was bit pretty hard. And then that's, <laughs> yeah, so I went on to um, yeah, you know, the Formula One subreddit because I know yeah the community there is excellent, and I thought mm -hmm. maybe someone there could have some contacts or could point me in the right direction, and they did. <laughs> I ended up getting three pretty good interviews. I thought. And, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. I said it looks like you, you yeah. used them well. Yeah, it's it's it, it it was a great read. Uh, this despite what the grammar people of Reddit can <laughs> have to say, 
Yeah, I, yeah, I don't really have much choice about how I wrote it. That's just what we were told to do, and yeah. that's how we're taught for three years to write short sentences. Because <laughs> for online reading, it's if you don't capture or keep their imagination going for like, you know, if you write a big long paragraph, they're going to get halfway through it and just give up. So you, we're taught to write short punchy sentences and paragraphs to keep oh, people going. One hundred percent, I understand that. I mean, it's not <laughs> it's not that I that I necessarily like agree with that mentality, but the world everybody has, does it. The world has it's, zero patience anymore. Yeah, oh yeah, that's it's not not the way literature was supposed to be done, but. Yeah, in this yeah, day and age, it has to be. Do you look at all any news site, motorsport.com, et cetera, et cetera? That's, <laughs> that's how they're written. Yeah, even I think I think the older, more established names, like the Motorsport Magazine, like they're probably the only ones out there in terms of F1 that are still pumping out like nice like literary pieces like consistently because yeah. other, other, otherwise like everybody's just, you know, trying. I mean, I, I don't want to say like, like to get clickbait, but... You, you, you gotta get people's attention that's a challenge joe sayward type of guys oh, well, writing, joe, yo, writing pages and pages well, you 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 page, talked to the man himself paragraphs. didn't you 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 had a skype conversation with uh paddock sage joe sayward i did yeah yeah well that actually came from the formula one subreddit someone said to uh give him give him a shout and i've sort of read his article articles before but mm-hmm. it wasn't someone i thought about doing and then I messaged him like that day, and he came back to me straight away and was like, "Yeah, we'll Skype two days later." And then two days later, yeah, we'll Skype in him, and we talk, spoke for about an hour or so. That's amazing. Yeah, that's cool. great. I th- that must have been an experience in and of, in and of itself to talk to 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 Joe. Oh uh, yeah, it really was. Like, he's he was like really kind. He was so helpful and um, gave me pointers on uh, for my career as well. Obviously, I want to sort of head out into the world of Formula One journalism. He gave me pointers how to start that and as well was giving me a great interview and give well, he wouldn't know uh, he give, was he, he he climbed all the way up to being editor of autosport for Formula yeah One. yeah mm-hmm. and he said he started off camping in like you know the grand prix somehow getting like a press accreditation just camping at the circuits and yeah, <laughs> yeah. bullying his way through you know to get interviews and that so that's awesome man <laughs> I, it must yeah. have been hard to pare down an hour interview to one one little quote <laughs> yeah what well, it was it was really hard yeah trying to write it back because just listening over to the interview i recorded down and just trying to find you know pull three or four quotes out of it that i use the actual piece but yeah it's worth worth the hard work no doubt man no it's it's, it it, it is a beautiful piece and we have like lots and lots of questions about that and 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 hopefully like we can just talk about you know uh, more in depth and and in general too but before that i i'm just 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 curious because actually before we started uh, on the show right now uh, we're talking to this Irish guy, uh, and he's also like he's he's interested into uh, motorsport journalism, uh, and he, he he mentioned something that's that's really interesting and uh, interesting to me at least. And he says he said that for him, like you know, in the future, it might be difficult because he was you know he was hoping that there would be no trouble uh, for him going to school in Britain, because Britain is basically the place for motorsport journalism. Mm. And and thinking about it, like that's. It's probably true. So you, I mean, you you're lucky that that you had that. Well, that you are uh, from the UK and have that access. Um, but like, what are your thoughts on, on that? Like the fact that, like, basically, like if you if you are an aspiring journalist out there that wants to write about motorsport, you pretty much have to go to Britain. Yeah, I'd say so. If if you're like look, aiming for you know, the top publications and papers, but I mean, still each country has their own press. For sure. Um, so they could write for, but yeah, obviously, all like the I think the main websites are Autosport and uh, all that. Like they're all UK based and you know write the UK style, which is all taught over here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I don't say like, but obviously, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but what what got you personally interested in in in, in pursuing that field? Like, were you like? At one point, woke up when you were 14, and you're like, "All right, I want to write about F1." <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't. I um, I always wanted to be a uh, pilot. An airplane pilot was my, you know, as a kid growing up until I was about, you know, 15, 16, and then I found out you have to be really good at maths, which I wasn't. <laughs> and um, I've always been a massive sports fan. Um, with Formula One and football being my main sports, and you know, I'm not very good at playing football. Uh, I thought I could talk and write about it, and, and then as well as other sports as well. So. I just decided I didn't know after I finished um, high school I mm. I still wasn't sure what to want to do I ended up going traveling for a bit and still undecided and then I decided 
a sort of sports journalism course at university and thought that that would do. <laughs> that, was what, that, that was my main It was basically just uh, a decision at one point in my life. It wasn't like a big thing I was building up to. It mainly sort of came on late. And it, but I mean, like, I'm sure like you like you would have by this point like have gone to a few races and experienced like the passion for F1. <laughs> it's going to sound bad, but generally I haven't. Um, <laughs> really. I, no, I've, over here. No Grand Prix yet. I'll say two hundred pound or so for a ticket. Yeah. Um, I was never able to afford it as a kid. I'm not from like a very privileged background, so I can never do it. Um, but then I went. I went to the British Grand Prix this year. It was my first ever Grand Prix. Oh, how was that? Oh, great. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah, I loved it. And like, there's so much you don't seem to like, notice how watching on TV, you don't think it'd be good to be there because you know the cars just zoom past and that's it. But right. Being there, it's, it's just can't describe the feeling like. Yeah, actually, you can feel like the cars as they go past. You feel the vibrations and mm. the atmosphere and everything was amazing. And, it's, a bit, yeah, it's a bit I, of a different experience, isn't it? Like when you're watching when you're watching it on TV, as opposed to actually being there. Like you don't have those like play-by-play calls that uh, that that uh, the TV can offer. Instead, you uh, sort of have to yeah, piece it together yeah. yourself. And it's because you get to see the um, like the individual battles that aren't normally right, seen yeah. on TV. Right, yeah. Um, sure. You can see them like each lap just like closing in on each other as they go around, and it's always good to follow. Yeah, that was that was cool. I mean, I I, I guess uh, Mike, you pointed this out when we went to the Canadian Grand Prix earlier this year, and it's that I just oh, I guess I, we were doing something like, and I didn't realize that that's what I was doing, but we were sitting there and like we were like just like counting seconds in between cars to kind of yeah because you you had to like pretty much place this story together like as it was happening in front of you right which exactly. was awesome to do all that yourself yeah <laughs> <laughs> unless you're in front of like a, one of the big screens like, but no but in, not even that like there's not there wasn't like that much or at least the the coverage and the commentary, the commentary that we get wasn't it. the greatest yeah no the, <laughs> i don't I, who does the commentary for like like at the track for the british grand prix is it like do they just play like one of like the sky feeds or bbc feeds or is uh, there, i think that's just a guy in the in like Local a box guys. somewhere doing i wasn't sure i wasn't actually near any loud speakers i could hear <laughs> yeah, he was doing. yeah you gotta be right in front of a speaker <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i was i wasn't actually there as like a yeah i was there, i was actually doing some work for um it's my girlfriend's godparents own a um company that sort of do vip packages to like form like formula one grand prix and like le mans other things like that so i was i was just there helping them Oh, sweet. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Getting paid to do that, but then I got to go watch the race, which is pretty good. So <laughs> I was weird. sort of at the back somewhere, but then I met, there was a place on the first corner I managed to go watch the race from, but yeah, I wasn't in front of any speakers, so I couldn't hear what was going on, but mm. I could see from the screen. Did you get to ride the Ferris wheel? <laughs> no, no, I didn't. No. <laughs> I didn't even notice that there was a Ferris wheel there like until this year. Yeah, so, I do. <laughs> so many years of going. Um, it's not quite the, the, the Nürburgring roller coaster, but... yeah. <laughs> um so so you started like you know you got you got into it at school uh you, you wrote this paper that you know like, you, you got to talk to some to, to some great people and and you know they pushed you in the right direction uh the people have read it uh and now you brought it back and i read it and like it's it's it, it is really quite good like have you have you gotten any calls now from <laughs> from any from any motorsport magazines uh, unfortunately, I haven't. No, <laughs> <laughs> I have been trying to put myself out there. I've been emailing well different like websites and mm-hmm. publications and stuff with with like a link to it and going, "Hey, read this. Like, see how good I am." Yeah. <laughs> the internet says stuff. so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I haven't I haven't got anything back unfortunately yet. But you know, I'm gonna keep trying. Yeah, I'm sure. Just keep keep pumping them out. Well, I know this pot this podcast in particular will just push you over the edge. Oh man! Oh, you <laughs> just 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 Be wait for, for for the two or three extra views you get again <laughs> as a consequence of being on here. Uh, no, but okay, all right. So let's let's delve right to this because I think this in with the article and and I do recommend anybody because um, so you po- you posted uh, two versions of it. One that was like a summary of the other, basically, but the longer version is. Uh, um, it's 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 really good for anybody that's interested into F one because you really go through like a bit of the history and a bit of like where the where the whole like where, where this era started, which really was the outcome of the Foca Fisa Wars, and yeah, and 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 how like just after so many years of the model like doing what it's supposed to do, we're, we're probably getting to a point now where it's breaking down, and and 
and it's 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 a bit of a of a bleak picture but it's a bit of a of a hopeful picture at the same time because there is like th it's clear that there is a way out um but right now like it does seem to pretty much anybody that that knows and, and has any perspective on this that it's it's just it's gonna collapse like if it keeps going the way it's going isn't it well yeah that's what some of the experts are saying tiff nadell in particular has <laughs> yeah. they said the bleakest outlook of them all saying that the sport is going to collapse if it doesn't change but i don't think he's wrong at all in, in saying that no it could, it could very well do yeah with the uh... The, like the teams that are struggling, the back market teams to to compete, like who may end up with only you know four or five teams that can viably compete in the sport, and then they may be having about like the B teams or having a third car or what's being said before in the past. So yeah, it, could, it could go bad, team. but you think cooler heads would prevail, and you think they would sort of come to some sort of compromise. Yeah, man. Going. But honestly, like when I was twelve years old, I thought that adults knew what they were doing, and they don't. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, <laughs> like it's. I think it's irrational. Like it's 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 more irrational than you would think to think that these people know what they're doing just because they're the ones that are doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doesn't always come with the job, and it's it's everything around them is changing way too fast and i think it's how it's it's visible elsewhere in the world like any any other like situation right now that's like in you know stuck in a rut or like in a in a, in a big trouble like you can tell it's pretty much because of that they're like they're failing to adapt or to like move with the times to like respond to like the necessities of the now that mm -hmm. are changing drastically and drastically every day like deep like if it's in the current so you touch about like how uh, the current system works where basically everybody has to agree on everything or a big majority of them and of course it, nothing's going to change because the big manufacturers the engine manufacturers right now have a lot of power because they supply most people with their engines and people need engines to race so yeah, if, if, yeah it's, it's kind of a bit like politics in a way where you get the you know the MPs, or I'm not sure how the Canadian. We have MPs here too. Politicians. Yeah, yeah. Like, and you get like the Very lobby, similar. and they lobby each other to make them vote a certain way. And it, I think it's, it's kind of like that, where you know the big big teams here, they just tell the small teams vote vote for this, otherwise, you know, we're not going to supply Avengers anymore. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a bit kind of not corrupt, but you know, it's it's not fair, should we say? Yeah, a lot of yeah. like favoritism towards like all these. I mean, if you look at Ferrari and the older teams. It's like, nah, it's it's gonna be our way. Yeah, because of who we are. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's a, it's not a solid argument. It's a, it's not a solid argument in today's day and age. Uh, no, <laughs> in a fair <laughs> sense, no. But you can see why, because you know they are the the big teams, the most established teams, and they do bring a lot of fans to the sport. Like you go, you see every weekend. There's no matter what country, you're in, there's always a massive Ferrari flags in the in the ground and. In the, in the stands and you know mm. uh, Mercedes and McLaren also have a lot of fans and they do bring in the money and you can see why Formula 1 are, are hesitant to do anything that would upset them right There's some, like, they, as the teams need to figure out those teams need to see that you know what they th what's good for themselves is hurting the sport in general and they need to see that and think actually we should probably change it uh, oh. Oh. Otherwise, they could end up going down on the sport themselves. You know, if it all goes to pot. Uh, through your research, I mean, did anything sort of like stick out to you as as a solution to something to to one of these problems? Like how they could either change how much money people get or make it a little more fair. I think they should um, start enforcing a a cost cap, so or like this cert certain amount they can spend on development or. Yeah, you know, something like that because it's just not fair. Mm -hmm. Where the big teams, they've just got an infinite amount of money. The big teams can spend how much, like how much they want. Like a, the GDP of a small country, just trying to, right. you know, research the best thing <laughs> yeah. for their engines. And then the, the, you know, the smaller teams have got nothing, and they can't, they just can't compete. Yeah, Mercedes if, dropping if a, a third cap, of a billion like, dollars. <laughs> if they have a cap where they can just spend, you know, you can they got this much? That's all you can spend on, you know, sorting out your car for this season. I think they still, if even if they got the best, they got the best like scientists and technicians, and everything. So they'd probably still get better performance out of their cars, but at least it won't be as big. So the gap in the field shouldn't be as big. But that's only theoretical, you know. I'm not a 
<laughs> I'm not a technician or any job, I don't really know how well it works like that. Something interesting happened this weekend, though, and there's been a bit of talk, nothing finalized yet for next year, though, about somehow electronically equalizing the engines to within a one or two percent, one and a half percent or something of horsepower. But in the top eight finishing cars, there are five different cars this weekend at Hungary, mm -hmm. five different engines. It's interesting. Mercedes first, then the Renault, then Ferrari. And then the McLaren Honda, and then the Toro Rosso, which is running a different Ferrari engine last year's. But at the same time, though, the seventh and eighth finishers, Alonso and Sainz, were one lap down. Ooh. They were both lapped. But the top five different cars are five different engines well, wait, after this race. How is that possible? Mercedes, Red... Uh, yeah. Well, the Red two Bull. Mercedes, then a Red Bull, then a Ferrari Vettel, so then Verstappen. Yeah, these are the same car, though. Yeah, I know. So where are the five different engines? I think you're... Mercedes. Yeah. There's a Renault. Renault. There's a Ferrari. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then here's a Honda. Yeah, and and then here's a Ferrari with a fifth so engine. The top seven, you mean? The yeah, but the, in the, I said that. In the top seven. You said at the top five. The, no, I said there's five <laughs> different engines in the top eight. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, no, that's... In the top eight finishes. There's five different engines. That was... I, mean, hey, I think that that was just a great race for Fernando Alonso. After the rest, the rest of his weekend, he actually finished seventh position in every every session of the whole weekend. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go well he also. Did. Yeah, but anyway, one lap down. It's kind of that's like one race, right? Yeah. Doesn't this really is say a whole lot. this is being pretty typical though. Like seven, eighth, ninth place, they're already the cars are lapped, and then at the bottom, there's two and three laps down. So, from eighteenth back, all the cars are two laps down. But, and Button wasn't even allowed to finish, or but, okay. able to finish. But here's the thing, and, and this is something that uh, that, that Curtis you touched always, on your, always kind of big. on your argument. Uh, yeah, on 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 the yeah, on, on basically F1 is that like there has to be because it, because the the constructor championship exists. Yeah, there's it, always it, there's, a dominant car. There's always cars that are two laps down. <laughs> at the end it's, of the race, yeah. So I don't know. Okay, now I'm I'm interested in what Curtis said because. So you touch on something that the cost cap, that is something that um, Max mostly, and I, I, in, in the article, had proposed. Or and, and I think that Max mostly gets a lot of flame because of his disgraceful exit of F1. But he's still saying some stuff that make that just plain makes sense. Like, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I have to agree with him. There does have to be something along the lines of that of a cost cap or something just making it more even because there's nothing nothing in there at the moment that's making anything even but, so it's just the small teams cannot compete in any level like whether it's financially or mechanically or anything like that they just it, can't compete it's funny because uh i i these guys recently got me into formula one and i've my observations of it is that like f1 is a it's a motorsport and it's about the, having the best and the fastest car uh, to win, but then that philosophy conflicts with almost of like trying to put in competitiveness within it mm -hmm. while the sport is struggling, and it's kind of like a, a snake biting its own tail, where it doesn't it 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 will never solve itself. It'll always just keep on devouring <laughs> its own tail until it reaches the head. Um, so it's it's always going to be difficult to to balance something like like this in formula one but well th th in the argument again or at least i guess because they they've they've tried to do that before and for some sort of a cost cap and and you brought this up too uh because uh, uh, the problem with doing that is that the teams that like, voted or keep voting it down because they keep saying it's unenforceable how 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 could you possibly possibly enforce that yeah it it, it is it's know? tough it's tough because you like at one point at one point do you stop counting like whose contribution and putting like a dollar or, or pound amount to that. Cause mm -hmm. if you're talking about Mercedes, like, yes, they have like the team and the factory and whatever. And like that costs them an, an amount of money, but they also have all the support of their factory back in Stuttgart mm -hmm. and, and all of the Mercedes engineers worldwide um, that work, like even in just like a little spring or whatever of the engine that like, so, so how do you quantify that? Which is, I guess it's, it would be their main argument. Mm -hmm. But like that kind of stuff, fall, like it, it falls thin because 
yeah, you could have that and maybe that'll give you an advantage, but it wouldn't be like at the deficit of the rest of the sport. Like a cost cap does make sense. And like, yeah, you could make all, you could sit around here all, all day arguing that, oh, you know, but things are complicated and everything is more complicated than you would think. It doesn't mean that simple solutions don't affect it. And, and the cost cap would be an, an achievable, simple solution that they probably like wouldn't have to do much about to, to implement. And they can, they, mm -hmm. you know what, they can at least try to enforce it, whether, <laughs> whether it can be done in practice or not. Who cares? Let's, let's just give it a shot. See what, see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly you can't we can't really say obviously they probably got you know the best minds in the world trying to work out and this is just you know from the average fans we're from the outside looking in but mm -hmm. sometimes you need that perspective to look out from the outside and think this is what's wrong you guys can't see that because you're too busy worrying about other things on the inside and i think they do need to take into account what you know the average people say and the people that aren't affiliated to the sport in any way you just watch it they, I think they should take into account what they think and whether, what problems there are. I'm sure they can come to some agreement or compromise between everyone. Did you notice any of that uh, during your um, interviews or the people you were talking to that, you know, they're sort of inside of this world of F1 and it's almost difficult to, to see it any other way than sort of being within it? Well, the people I interviewed... Um, there's Kevin Eason, he's, he's the um, motorsport correspondent at the Times. Um, so he's 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 within he's in within the media world. He's not in like the the corporate structure of F1. Same right. with Joe Sayward and Tiff Nadell. You know, they're all they're all to do with the sport, and they're all there every like every weekend. But they're not affiliated with the with the business itself. Unlike right. Christian Silt, who I interviewed, who at the time I didn't know when I interviewed him. I, I thought he was just a the writer for Forbes, but from what Joe Sayward told me that he is in Bernie Eccleston's pocket to quote himself, I'm not <laughs> I'm not saying this, but <laughs> and yeah, he's you know, he's affiliated to Bernie Eccleston and he was oh, saying yeah. it's you know, like, there's it's, nothing there's nothing wrong. You, you you do you do get the feel that like it in, in your article when you quote uh Silt, it's like yeah, we know Silt said it, but those are Bernie's words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I didn't yeah, I I generally didn't know how <laughs> how close he was to Bernie at the time and I spoke to him I just thought oh this is good this, this is one side of the argument this is good for my piece but he was a nice guy and he helped me out but, yeah. you know it's 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 great that 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 uh, the, I, I did find that very cool that you included sort of both sides um, uh, to that especially when when talking to Christian Silt and like <clears throat> you, you can see that like you know where, where they're coming from with some of their arguments like uh, when uh, when he's defending how they go to like all these different places and like whatever and like they they, they have the money and whatever, but you, you 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 can see that argument like you can probably like make make mm -hmm. that argument all day. It doesn't mean that it's sustainable. Like yeah, you go yeah. you go to you go to where the money is, but like to to whose detriment? Like you got to think about that. Like it, have you noticed it, man? Like in being in Europe and in in the core of 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 F1 full, uh, the following, I think Great Britain is like right at the heart, the beating heart of motorsport and, and, and some of the most enthusiastic fans of the sport. You must have noticed that decline and like, and overall some people just getting pissed off and stop watching. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like when I, when I was little and watching it growing up, like there's a lot of people I knew used to watch it and used to be big fans. Like even like my, my dad used to sit down and watch it with me, but now he, he doesn't watch it. He gets bored. Like I have it on, he'll just be like, oh no, it's too boring. That's same with my friends. I'm, <laughs> I'm one of the only ones of my friends that watches it. No one else sort of really cares for it. And I have, I have seen a decline. Like now, if you mention it to someone who's not a fan, mm -hmm. you say, oh, you watch the F1, they just go, no, nah, it's boring. It's boring. Why would you want to watch that? Because all they see is just, you know, the t same two cars out the front every time mm, right. or the same person winning every race. That's all they see. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. You you brought up uh, uh, Eason there. Uh, what's his name? Kevin Eason. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and something that he said, uh, or like that the, the you quoted him for later down in the article. Uh, really, I think like captured to me like what one of the biggest like problems in F one is right now. Like when you, um, so he said. I'm just gonna quote here. Um, it's quite difficult to see a future for the sport. It doesn't really know if it's. The new tech of motoring or the old entertainment industry of noisy V10 engines. 
um and now but that actually like up to that point like that that really speaks to me in in like saying because there is no clear future there is no clear direction of um like the, the best way that i can think of it is that you know with the big companies or whatever like whenever you join like any company of any size uh they like one of the first uh, things that like that you do is like you read about the company like when they like the hr person gives you a stack of paper about like mm -hmm. the mission of the company and the vision of the company or like where are we going this is the company's culture mm -hmm. yada 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 and based on that is how they do everything they do All right it like it seems like f1 is missing something like that like there, there's there's a lack of of direction of, of direction of, of that vision what's the vision what's the mission yeah. like let's sit down nobody's nobody nobody seems to be too worried about it. let's sit down and define what is formula one they and don't they don't explain the motors at all it's not about the technology because they keep it all as secret as possible mm -hmm. all right the we know the engines are incredible so they're not pushing that side of it they're not the noisy v10 entertainment anymore they're going back to the fat cars with big tires and everything next year. But mechanical but what's, grip. What's the what's the purpose? What's like, so it, it's all these look, changes just look, look just look like they're just rolling the dice, see yeah. what's see yeah, what's yeah. gonna happen, with a, like trying to figure out like yes, what's F one and if it's if if it's if F one is the pinnacle of motorsport, what does that mean? You know what is what does F one have to be to actually like have like a true claim to that? Yeah, now nowadays, yeah, because it's, it's different now. People don't see it as that. It, it, it's arguably that it is still, but people don't see it because nobody understands what it really is. <laughs> I think the, <laughs> you know the, I mean? the owners need to make a decision. Like, how are they going to run it? Are they going to run it as a business where they're just going to try and maximize the amount of profit, which I think is what they're doing at the moment. They're just trying to maximize the profit out of everything. You know, you're going to run it as a business. Get as much money out as possible, or do they want to run it as a sport where you want to you want to bring the best entertainment, you know, please the fans, please the crowds, and then if you do that, you bring in the money anyway. Like the more mm. more people get watching it, the, the inevitably you're going to get more money. Why do you think, think that they don't understand that? Because I, it's that seems clear to me and clear to everybody that that I speak to about F1 that has any knowledge of it that they could probably be still making tons and tons and tons of money if they just listened to what the fans wanted. Uh, in one word, that's agreed. <laughs> at the moment, you know, the revenues are still going up. Yeah. Even though there was all this talk, you know, the declining viewers, declining yeah. attendances, um, but overall the revenues have been going, they've been going up year on year for the past because of know, pay five TV. years or so. Yeah, yeah, because of pay TV, and that's what the owners see, like CBC and all that. They, they, they know nothing about F1. They were not affiliated in any way before they bought it out. They've just seen, here's a profitable sport. Let's just buy it. Mm -hmm. and that's what they've done, and yeah. the revenues are going up, and that's all they care about. Yeah, well, it's just this is from what I got from my research. It's just this is an assumption I'm making. I don't know this for sure, but it's just that's you know they've seen their profits going up. They're happy. They why change anything? Like if it's not broke, uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Kind of thing. You know? mm. I think they're scared of it. If they change it, revenues will go down. They're going to start losing money. But it will for a little bit, and then it will be picked back up once the audience is picked back up. You have to like. I well, mean, yeah, you. But, you think so, but from their view, they probably they think you know any. Well, the, any losses. They're bad. thinking quarter to quarter. They're, they're yeah, not even exactly. thinking year to year. Yeah, season. Or they want to please their shareholders. Season. That's, that's yeah. all they all they're worried about. Now we we've talked a bit about uh, and there's like always rumors going around about F1 being sold. Mm -hmm. uh, did any research you s like seen? Uh, did it suggest that maybe that's what they're looking to do? There was talk. I spoke with Christian about it. Um, where this is when I spoke to him. This was in I think it was back in December 2015. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a bit old now. But there was talk of like a Qatari company coming in and buying it. Oh yeah. Um, well, that was, the, and then I spoke to him about that, and he was like, "Well, there's talks, but nothing, um, nothing, nothing solid yet." There the Apple rumors like, last week. Yeah, and then the Apple thing coming out. I'm not sure how, how like, strong those rumors are. Or how... Yeah, I don't know. At the start of the season, Bernie came out and said that there were two major interested parties, and that uh, due diligence was happening. But that was already three, four months ago. One of them was yeah. at the time to the. I don't remember the name, but it was the owner of the Miami Dolphins NFL team. Oh, yeah. I don't know who that was, but 
They're some sort of billionaire. It, it, it's funny because, like, the state of F1, they wouldn't really, if they were actually looking to sell it, they're not going to make these huge fundamental changes and maybe lose value in Formula One. Uh, and it, it just doesn't make any sense for them to change, like, to streaming services or anything like that. Uh, they're trying to... To me, it seems like they're trying to make it look as pretty as possible. And like, ah, here you go. Now you can yeah, yeah. set it for the future. Let it go like a dove. You know what I mean? Oh, 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 oh by the way, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is all freshly painted, but there's all kinds of mold behind that wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. It looks nice. Yeah. It's, it's breaking, though. I, again, going back to your article, man, like, it, to that, like, I, it, I think it was, like, uh, Tiffany Dale, he said, like they they should just let it go bankrupt, <laughs> and then and then uh, you know buy it back from CVC for nothing, and and then start start from start fresh. Like that's that's another solution that I see. I mean, if if they actually let that go, and like yeah, like the the, the fanhood would probably suffer for a little bit, but from the from the ashes it shall that. rise. <laughs> They're not going to do that. Let me just throw this in. Stephen Ross is his name. The last news from this, though, came from October 2015. Where there was a rumor that Stephen Ross, who owns half of the Miami Dolphins, and him and a consortium of Qatari investors mm. were looking at a $8.5 billion valuation on Formula One. But that was October. Now is the last news from that. So I guess yeah. that I guess that melted I that's away. What, that's what I asked Christian about, and he wasn't too sure. Well, he didn't want to disclose anything to me. So. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. But th- that's been around like basically since the failed um, flotation on on Singapore. It's there's always like every every handful of months there's like a new story of like yeah. This story is eight eight to nine months old now. So b- buying F one. There's there's a new person buying F one. There's the, the, at one point Sky was rumored to like <laughs> be interested in some shares how bad would that be for the sport <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i mean i love sky and i love their coverage but the, the, a little bit of a conflict of interest yeah maybe? to say the least <laughs> <laughs> do you watch uh sky or channel four uh i watch sky that's a bit yeah nice. have you seen any channel four have you watched any watching, of it this season? I was around a friend's. I was watching the qualifying on Channel 4 um, this week. I think it's the first first time I've actually properly sat down and watched it mm-hmm. properly. And I was quite impressed. I quite enjoyed it, to be fair. Yeah, they're not bad, right? It's just, yeah, it's, no, yeah, to me, yeah. for me, I watched a little bit this week and a bit last week. It's just the familiarity, really. Like, they're good still. It's just like, they're not the voices I'm used to. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. all it really is. It's just a little throwing off. But, like, Karun Chandok's really good. He knows a lot of his, like, history type stuff. He knows a little fact. He was I don't know. I don't really know who. Yeah, he was a driver. Boy, he's good at the commentary. But like, I don't know the other guys. I don't know. Just don't know them as well. Just already been watching these other guys for years now. (laughs) Yeah, I like. I've grown up with Martin Brundle, like always offering. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I quite quite enjoy it. So yeah, it's it's got to be just with Martin Brundle on Sky. It's got to be Brundle. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. commentary has got to be Brundle. Brundle. He was away for those two races, and like I could like I was like, man, I miss Brundle. (laughs) <laughs> like apparently we said last week those two races was the first that he missed since 2008 sometime wow <laughs> for eight years he missed two races that's a crazy that's living pretty, man <laughs> that's, that's pretty crazy that's yeah. gotta take like all of like your your efforts does that scare you does that does that not scare you that like maybe you'll get to, F, to like be like part of like the f1 circus and then all of a sudden you have to like have. Then no all of a sudden you're life. part of the circus. Yeah, th- yeah, yeah. Then that's it. You're stuck there, and like you have to follow all the races, and like your your family's never gonna see you. <laughs> yeah, well, right now that seems like an amazing prospect. <laughs> I, know, I, love, I love travel. I love experiencing new places. But yeah, I can see like if you have a family and commitments at, at home, then mm-hmm. it must be a bit annoying like having to go every every other weekend. Where's like, home at that point? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, it's like you live out your suitcase. Don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like next year is only going to be 17, 18 races anyway, so we'll see. Do you think Might that they'll ever not have the British Grand Prix? Sorry? Do you think that the, the British Grand Prix will ever come under fire? Like, the, will they ever not have it? Because right now, yeah, we're talking about, and we've been talking about this in recent weeks a lot, how there's just, like, even more than before, like, we hear, like, about an, uh, a new track, a new old track, like, in danger of, like, not renewing the contract. Italy, like, 
who knows what's gonna happen with Monza? Who knows what's gonna happen with and Imola and San Marino? This, now there's a big fight there. Yeah, is this gonna be three? the last German Grand Prix next weekend? Like, yeah, is it? Might like, be. Like, Nurburgring's like, out of business. And it's uh, the GPDA, or no, sorry, the, in Britain is the, the 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 British Racing Drivers Association, or whatever though, the BRDC. Yeah. they're the ones that own or manage the British Grand Prix at Silverstone, right? Yeah, and they don't receive any help from any level of government it's just no. all ticket sales no yeah it's all ticket sales yeah not they're sustainable. looking to sell the, well yeah they're looking to sell the circuit it's jaguar yes. might come in and buy it as a test circuit for their their production vehicles yeah but what if they don't like so then yeah. so then what like so what, might, what's next might... the british grand prix is gonna it's not it's not gonna happen maybe that's ridiculous I, I hope i never see the day where where that happens but you don't know in this in this climate of formula one especially with bernie's <laughs> you know, he'll take any chance that you know in North Korea come with a right price. He'll send it. He'll send it there. Of course he would. So it's, yeah, I hope it never happens. But oh, this 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 rich country with a lot of uh, you know rich history. You get a picture of him whispering in Kim Jong Un's ear. <laughs> So like Kim Jong Un will be in. He'll be in like the driver's room at the end, congratulating them. So. Oh, oh, oh yeah. they're gonna give him a car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's gonna race. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and everyone man. will just have to go very very slow <laughs> and let him win <laughs> one of the support races at least <laughs> yeah. oh, oh man I don't know. that's it, it's it's too crazy man <laughs> what and you mentioned also in in your article that that that's it's it's what's happening and and it's sad that it's happening but yeah like we have tracks that are being shed and the benefit of like new fancy you know shiny tilka drums but they are just that they're not like they're like korea didn't work uh yeah in india like india didn't, didn't work. work istanbul they had to Tur- shut turkey it down didn't work like turkey it's not gonna work now yeah yeah turkey's not, <laughs> turkey's definitely not gonna work. or who knows man because buddy's beheading people so yeah that might <laughs> that might give him more more pull with, with bernie baku worked once at least but what's that? That was the other boring race of this year, though. Yeah. It's. Yeah. <laughs> so how, how do you yeah, how do you balance know. that? Like how how do you how do you balance like keeping the traditional tracks, the traditional European tracks in place, the ones that matter at least, uh, versus like expanding the market to like reach new people. Well. That's the thing, like they're, they're they're charging astronomical amounts to just to host yeah. a race, um, and it's just it's not fair. Obviously, these new these new tracks coming from these countries, there the government are willing to throw money at it just to get some sort of world event in their country, so they can yeah. say show off, hey, hey, look how good our country is. Like we've got no problems here. Like hide away the poor people <laughs> for a weekend as, as the world comes and watches us. Yeah. Or civil war. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, hey, none of that's happening here. No, what? <laughs> no, what? They, they, they hide like they hide that way, and Bernie will take any money he can. Like they're kind of just throwing absurd amounts around, and he'll take it. But you know, it's this historical identity of Formula One is so strong, and that's what you know what's, what it's drawn upon. Like it's been around for, you know, for over fifty years, mm-hmm. and I think for it to lose the tracks such as you know, Silverstone, Monza, Nurburgring, it will be a travesty. Canada. There's, yeah, Canada. There's a quote here this morning now from the mayor of Montreal, Dennis Corder, saying, uh, "Not to worry, we'll have some more information soon." This is from uh, FormulaPassion.it. Apparently, they called the circuit to try to buy tickets, and they told them that we don't know if the Canadian Grand Prix will take place next year, so you can't buy tickets yet. Uh-oh. This magazine called them, it's, and uh, it, it, they are ridiculous fees. And where, whereas really they shouldn't. I think the only. Well, I think track- there's a little co- corruption there, maybe in Montreal, that well, the the money, like the federal government, was supposed to pitch in for that forty million, build the f- proper facilities. They haven't built anything well, in the past three three years now. St- still, man, like you, it's you're, good enough. You're, you're talking about like with some with, with, with what some of these tracks are being demanded to pay. It's like almost extortion. Yeah, like it's <laughs> it's almost extortion. Tens it's, of millions of dollars. Yeah, you just for three days. You're gonna like try to like get as much money poured like per each one of those deals 
because that's what like that's what Bernie's job is, is it is um but like you ha you have to like you have to think that too many of those deals and all of a sudden what like we're just going to end up with one two races in Europe one race in North America and the rest elsewhere mm -hmm. and then are people still going to watch right it's like it's like I mean, pissing in your in your fishing pond you know yeah, eventually yeah. it's just going to be pee <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I know this is a touchy subject too but three weeks outside of the formula one grand prix maybe it's four mm. is the formula e double header in montreal so if this race doesn't happen i don't think anyone's gonna be too worried like i want i'd rather watch the grand prix <laughs> don't get me wrong but that's filling in the gap now oh, and, yeah. and in a major city worldwide for f1 racing for grand prix racing well, montreal well and, and that's they're hosting we're hosting a double header well, formula e and and, and, and that's the next three weeks thing. three weeks apart right now like like f1 could make all these outrageous claims and like ask you know the people in power could Thre ask threats people, yeah threats these like threats. just these threats and like ask people for all kinds of outrageous shit because they were the one thing that that everybody around the world watched but i don't i don't know man i think that right now if you were like even even mildly curious about motorsport there's so many options that are so easy to access way easier to access to f1 that like like are you are you risking alienating that entire section of the population just to keep this this stupid status quo going like wh like what do you think are you, in in britain like it's like, I, I know that you guys have like or over there like there's just like a lot more motorsport in general that people have access to way easier the touring cars the world rally cross that type of stuff like is that picking up like uh, to the detriment of f1 have you noticed uh i haven't really noticed too much no um the british touring cars is always it's, it's always on like free to air terrestrial tv mm -hmm. yeah it's always on, on like a sunday afternoon and you know, it's good to watch like anyone could just be scrolling through the channel and stick it on and be like oh yeah that's really good like that's i enjoy that and then watch it next week kind of thing but with formula one whether it's on pay tv is someone's you're not gonna no one's gonna scroll across and watch it unless it's on the channel for one but right. that's you know, it's only half the races yeah, uh, that's the sort of kind of thing I'm missing out is that it's not there for the casual person just to stumble across and see, and be like, actually, you know, that's quite good, just because it's behind all these paywalls and it just seems a bit too out of reach mm. for a. a that's how I found out about Formula One, just flicking TV when I was a kid. Yeah, there you go. Like, Whoa, oh, this looks so cool, and I just watched it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I wasn't. Know. Yeah, I've. Uh, I wasn't. I, I, I'm not gonna. I, when I started to get into F1. Or like, like you know, really get into F one. I wasn't gonna pay anybody to watch it. <laughs> like, yeah. it's like, come on. <laughs> like, no. I, I was barely watching like a couple races here and there. Like, you know, years past. So wh why? Like, what's what's the motivation to pay? I just just as easily like could download it or, you know, go like see it at somebody else's place or something. Yeah. Some yeah. might call me a super fan now. I still don't want to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not what they charge anyway. No. Yeah. I but. It's, okay, now here's one thing because I think that uh, uh, like I was saying, like your article like really is, like hones into what some of the biggest problems are um, with, with F1. But um, what do you think that like us like uh, as fans uh, that we can do to like kind of try to get this going in the right direction? Like do you, like do you think there's you're right there, Mike? <laughs> Uh, do you think that there's anything that the fans like can do to like either like help the sport go in the right direction or at least like you know help like people get into F1 like despite all this that's happening? I think we we need to make our voices heard, and let them know this is what we want. Like we want not everything free. Obviously, they're not going to display everything, but at least some more more access to the sport. Like you know, like. A, a, they have a YouTube channel, but it's not that good, is it? No. <laughs> like they need to. Wait, they have get, a like, YouTube the NASCAR channel? channel. They post yeah. highlights in the race, like straight away. Just oh, yeah, soon. yeah. And, like I think the Formula One needs to follow that. Just you know, it keeps us like happy. We can we like see an incident, we can watch it straight away, and like, other casual people can just stumble across it on YouTube and be like, because I end up watching like you know NASCAR highlights. I don't even really watch NASCAR, but I watch like the little highlight videos they put on just because you know it looks yeah. cool. It's just little bits of the action that I like to watch. Mm -hmm. I, I watched think the, Formula One needs to do that. I watched the Toronto Indy on YouTube last week. 
I stumbled across it. I wasn't looking. It just came up on the suggestions. Mm. I threw it on. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have never watched it otherwise. But that's kind of the equivalent. That's like the, the, the today's equivalent yeah. of like flicking through channels. It's like yeah, that little sidebar on YouTube. Comes up on YouTube. If just more keep scrolling. If more F1 stuff was, was just allowed to be there in the first place, like I guarantee you, like viewership would pick yeah, up right away. But any video now, like an authorized video, it just gets taken down straight away. And I can see why they do that. I know there's copyright laws and everything, but. But I mean, if they're not doing it themselves, they need, they need to start producing more content themselves. If yes, they're going to take it. other people's work, they need to do it themselves. Yeah. I yeah, think cause... they're starting to do that a bit more now. I think. Yeah, because right now there's really nothing. Like if you go on the subreddit, which is really nice, because like people po post these little streamables, like right after the race, you're like, oh great, this w I want to see this. I want to discuss it. I want to talk about it. Yeah. yeah. But if, if it's constantly getting taken down, you're like, well, I guess I won't talk about it, and I'll just go home and watch something else. Yeah. You, you know what I mean. Yeah, even us for sure using clips legally on like on this podcast just talking over stuff whatever whatever we've had this show taken down yeah we've, yeah, doing... we've had a couple uh, episodes taken down even though we were playing by the rules and still like they wouldn't they won't allow it yes we're not broadcasting the race we're talking about a few seconds of the race <laughs> yeah, and they pulled down the whole like two hours of us talking about their sport <laughs> it's it's Silliness. So it's so out of touch with the modern day. Like, yeah. That's not going to take any money away from them. Like, yeah, if yeah, anything, yeah. it's going to garner more interest in yeah, it. So the the response for us is we just don't use any clips anymore, Which, at all. So, yeah. Well, we have to. We've been we've even been legally driven to that. But it, it's it, it is interesting. Want exactly to. what you said. Yeah, it's not taking any money away from it. It's if anything like adding to the interest. It, uh, I think a, a, a popular case study about this or a famous case study. Uh, is what happened after Monty Python decided to release like they, <laughs> they just got tired of like paying like apparently yeah they, they got tired of paying their lawyers or whatever to take YouTube videos down so they were like all right we're just gonna like post like all of the clips from like s like all the seasons uh, available on our YouTube channel and since then their DVD sales have actually gone down gone up <laughs> so <laughs> since since they did that like their actual sales of like material like have actually gone up because people are like sharing and talking oh, about this? it and that's send, yeah, yeah. Like, something send it funny. to their friends yeah absolutely that and that's yeah. oh man hopefully like like you said cooler hell heads will definitely prevail or at least that's that's the hope <laughs> <We'll> <laughs> and be. and if they don't then the sport will burn to the ground and there's still hope from what I got from Steve, from Tiff Nadell there. <laughs> they, I think they just need a fresh input. Like it's all run by, you know, 50, 60 year old men that are sort of a bit out of touch with the, you know, the modern day. Like they're all still, you know, in the days of the 70s and 80s where it's just trying to maximize profit. And mm -hmm. they need to, need to get a fresh in. They need someone young to come in and be like, this is how you market it to the modern day audience. Like it's all, everything's internet based. Yeah. That guy who owns the Miami Dolphins is 76 years old. <laughs> Bernie yeah. is 84 years old. It's, it's all these gray-haired men in suits. If only they would listen to us. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I, all right, man. Anyway, yeah, uh, I guess we uh, won't take much more of your time. It's already yeah, it's almost been an hour. Thank you so much for, for stopping by the show. Great article yeah, again. Right, yeah, great article. Pleasure. Hope you had fun. We had fun. Yeah. Uh, a lot of fun interview. Uh, again, I recommend to all of our uh, listeners and viewers, we will be putting a link to uh, the battle for F1's billions. Um, but yeah, keep it up, man. In the comments. Yeah. Write some more. Hey, yeah, let, let us know what, uh, you know, ch check, uh, check in with us later if, uh, if, if, if you end up landing any, pos any significant position. Yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> yeah, good luck, well. And, and uh, if you don't, too. What? <laughs> 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 Anyway, thanks a lot, man. Oh, yeah, thanks and, a lot. Uh, we'll, right. we'll, we'll, maybe we'll, we'll talk later and do another one of these uh, uh, in, in the future. Yeah, no, it'll be a pleasure. Definitely. I've enjoyed myself. <laughs> you guys have been great. And thank you very much for having me on. All, All right. No thanks, Chris. Cheers. See you. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. What a great guy. That was fantastic. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, That's should we so uh, cool. cut it? Take a little break and we'll, come back. Yeah. Right back. we'll come back with the rest of the show for all the live viewers. Uh, we shouldn't be more than five minutes. All three of you guys. Hungarian Grand Prix, it happened last weekend. That's all about That's it, I remember. <laughs> 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 Wait, yeah. what happened?
<laughs> yeah, there was a race. It was. A, I would guess it was a race. Uh, yeah, not my not my finest moment on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me mine either. But hey, come on, there wasn't much on the screen to to, to yeah. be concerned with. Yeah, that's what I put even just in the description here for this video. Mm-hmm. Basically, all the drama happened off track this weekend. All right, because it was a wet qualifying. Yeah, right. Well, yeah. you started wet. The, started the qualifying was amazing. Qualifying yeah. was great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was. A bit, let's start there. Yeah, the, the two-hour qualifying session, two hours and whatever. <laughs> I'm glad <laughs> I was like in a way. Like I'm glad That's, that I that I have the opportunity not to watch it live <laughs> because, mm-hmm. uh, you know that that I normally don't watch him live because you I was able can. to. Sc- Curl. Oh, I mean, uh, I, I would have scrubbed through it. Yeah, well, I would have, I would have like, kind I could have, I, I could have watched it live, but then I would have had to like wake up early and I gonna had had a late night the night before, so I just watched it. Like, I just happened to wake up and then I just I gave myself a few slaps in the face and then I was like, okay, I'm up. I'm, up, I'm, up, I'm gonna watch. <laughs> I'm gonna watch this live. I get a chance. I get a chance. I never, I never watch anything live this whole season. Almost nothing except the Canada stuff. We watched the. One other race live, yeah. I don't know. It's but, rare, but that that was insane. That, that was that's what set up all the off track drama. That's the, it. The, yeah. the whole Nico Rosberg cheating thing. <laughs> How was he cheating at all? Well, I mean, he uh, was he went, uh, during the race. I'm talking about qualifying. Qualifying, well, qualifying. He just got lucky. No, he cheated. He went. He sped through the double yellows during qualifying. During qualifying. Oh. Yeah. Right, but they they said that he that it was fine. <laughs> yeah, they they said it was fine, but because he, he no, I, I agree with most of the people who think it was bullshit. People are still arguing about this today. Really? All, yeah, all over the place. Twitter and Reddit, all arguing <laughs> <laughs> about whether or not he should have got away with that. The the two biggest uh, opinions out out of the drivers is Vettel or Hamilton, obviously, and Vettel. Both of them saying that he just sets a really bad example for the lower categories Mm -hmm. and that it's dangerous the whole reason that that thing is there is so you can stop if somebody's standing there yeah Mm -hmm. like uh i didn't i really agree with martin brundle either he was going like uh you know he came around the corner and nothing nobody was there nothing was there but alonso just kind of spun but if it was a flat tire or whatever he would have still been there and i don't don't really agree with the, the rosberg saying that 20 kilometers an hour is it's a a whole different world, I guess, but it's not the same. You're going like 280 compared to 260. Come on, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> That's a bunch of bullshit. He should have been going slower. I, I do. He got away with it or whatever, but he should have been penalized. They're gonna have to qualify or clarify that. It seems, like they're, it seems like the FIA has has been having to do quite a lot of clarification recently. Yeah, because <laughs> everything is written vague. Yeah, <laughs> that's how. Just basically on Earth, a lot of legal stuff is written really vague. I think they do it specifically vague for F one, <laughs> and they must. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but... wow! Like, it, it, and it's it's out to the stewards and whatever. But like, who was the steward at this point? Like, what? Yeah, I think I think those meetings should be made public. They should have a little camera there, like to see what's going yeah. on. I want to, I want to, you know, I want to be able to like, see what, what are their arguments? Because they, they seems like, like sometimes like, it seems like they're just screwing around. Man. Yeah, <laughs> like they're never consistent. Is is that a like? I didn't think that it was that big of a problem. Like at first, I was like, whatever. Like you, you know, you have to like. Sometimes in life, you have to be able to like take things like on a case by case basis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it does seem like it's it's done it's too irregular Mm. like it's like sometimes it doesn't make sense that that argument would hold if like their rulings like would make sense and like everybody would be like oh yeah okay yeah because it's because of that but it's it's just a compromise every time yeah i think vettel and hamilton both used the word precedent Mm -hmm. now you only have to lose a tenth of a second in double yellows that's kind of ridiculous there's all that special circumstance looking at the other side that the track was drying out so every lap was faster and faster and faster and faster mm-hmm. i guess but i don't know I, i'm more on the the safety side since this is like the big talk like you can't just talk big about safety and then not enforce it or whatever mm-hmm. but i don't know i think everyone thinks uh, hamilton is the reason that rosberg got investigated though because uh he went to go talk to charlie whiting 
So Rosberg got called back to the circuit three hours after qualifying. Oh, really? For a review of that. Huh. Well, I don't I don't These know. These rules are insane because they, it's either, uh, they're either like just vague enough in order just to, to, to be able to choose to ignore them. It's not that vague, though. It's not that vague. The double yellows is that you have to slow down, the so, precedent is a half second, and be prepared to stop the car. Well, but yeah, so he, he, here, so it, it, you have to reduce speed, according to Autosport, reduce speed significantly. That's the key word. Not overtake and be no prepared. Overtaking. Be prepared to change direction or stop. Mm-hmm. So, was he prepared to stop? I don't think so. <laughs> and, no. and I think I think that's 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 the one thing of the argument. Mm-hmm. But then, went but then they're they're sector. looking at it from the other uh, from the other uh, uh, point of view, and they said, did he reduce speed significantly? Well, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I agree with Vettel and Hamilton though. Enforce it make a minimum time that you have to do yeah. or why not how about th- i thought about this in a double yellow sector mm-hmm. enforce the pit limiter button or have a double yellow a separate button for a double yellow limiter that's maybe like 150 mm-hmm. or 120 or something like that no because you then can you, keep the car warm no because the, if, you, if you have a speed limit like if you do like pit lane speed limits like or something that could in between actually be like too slow to be safe for those cars and well then, yeah, safe. put it somewhere where it's safe. Then, like yeah. one fifty, one twenty, something like that. Mm-hmm. That's safe. No reason not to do that. Right? Have it predefined. Then yeah, it, then it's Yo, predefined. Why not? why not? Or, or even if you wanna, if you wanna say, hey, we have to, we have to account for you know the, the differences because you couldn't. You see, I see the trouble in in um, putting like a hard fast rule of saying like you gotta go a tenth of a second or two tenths or you know five tenths of a second slower because. Then you're talking about like lap to lap slower, and some laps take a lot longer than the others. So yeah, sometimes that, the, the double yellow is for like two or three sections, or sometimes it's for one. So is it a half a second for like three flag stations, or two flag stations, or four? Yeah. So, in in, yeah, in, in, in that yeah it. in that kind of stuff, right? It doesn't but, have to be that uh, this complicated. We're just you know I mean we're just hashing out ideas right now, but it can't be that hard to enforce. Yeah. They, they, they should maybe like just say nothing. Or we have to talk about it for five days. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it's maybe, because it's the two most polarizing dudes as well, right? Yeah, <laughs> these two. Jeez. They're, the, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're the ones at the top, right? Like that's that's who that's who's driving the conversation these days. Yeah. For far too long, I just said. It's incredible. People are definitely still talking about this, and that's obviously, I guess, like why we want to talk about it. But okay, seriously, let's let's think of a of a situation where like where it could be more sensible. You know, where like where you do, wouldn't have to like rely on these like you know the interpretation of what is significantly slower. Yeah. Right. Like, and and how how would you know that? Well, first, like you you could like maybe like attach not necessarily a second value but maybe a percentage mm. of your sp- like of, of like so we all know like how like ev- it's well documented and like people like do their 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 simulations to say you know in this part of the track in this sector of the track cars are usually going around this speed mm-hmm. so just say like yo like yeah when there's double yellows like you just have to reduce the speed like this much not mm-hmm. not by saying by this many seconds slower but this percentage just tone it down by this percentage. And maybe if you define something like that, or like you say like a quarter of the normal speed, a third of the normal speed, a fourth of the normal speed. Uh, but what if that's yeah, just too much math for the drivers yeah, you can't, to figure out? You can't do that. Too much. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, but they, they could they could just build that into a button, like you said. Yeah, a safety switch. car button or a double yellow button. Yeah. And then it's the same for everyone. You go through at the same speed. And yeah. But that's not the button. Yeah, this is, it, it, that's a whole new steering wheel, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole nother button. I don't know, even during the broadcast, like Paul DeResta and Brundle couldn't, they couldn't agree between them. Brundle had to stick by what he said at mm. first, that it was fine, but Paul DeResta didn't think it was fine. He didn't slow down. Yeah. Can you throw pretty... the, the link I highlighted there? Yeah. It's, it's an interesting like, outcome, I think. Like yeah, th- you know I I do agree with like most people that it was a double yellow. Like just should respect that. <laughs> Not this yeah, one. he shouldn't. Uh, yeah, this. See, I don't know how 
how much these guys were arguing. This is right after the race. They don't know how bad of friends they are. Look, looks like um, <laughs> Rosberg's touching Hamilton's dick right here. Yeah, what is he doing? He's probably trying to grab his phone, but it looks like he's grabbing his dick. Yeah. <laughs> apparently, apparently, Hamilton had to take a piss, and he was trying to make him pee his pants. <laughs> look that's at what Danny, he said? Look at Danny Rick's face. The, that's... This, what the fuck, mate? that's what it was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the what fuck, fuck mate? mate? <laughs> what are you guys doing? Look at his face. Can you, can you throw the picture right underneath that as well? <laughs> so, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's up. These two guys are not not too close of friends anymore no. recently. No, no, no. No way. <laughs> you throw no, that, it, it, the podium picture too? Like, uh, Alonso and everybody's, uh, you know, all saying like, yo, Lewis, not, not the kind of guy you want to be teammates with. <laughs> yeah, you're saying that this morning. <laughs> Here, here's a picture from the podium. There's uh, Rosberg touching his own dick. <laughs> Kai, Kai yeah. Abel being Kai Abel. Yeah, those pants. He's worn those pants a few times. Dude, this Yellow jacket, pants. though, this is a little number. That's so <laughs> beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And and then off to the, almost like off the edge of the screen, the you Dan- see Danny Rick just chugging the freaking champagne. He, he looked a, maybe he looked a little wonky in that, in the, the gift there <laughs> in the conference. <laughs> I don't know. You said you didn't see the uh, the post-race? No, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't, didn't, didn't. So <laughs> Rosberg, when he got out of his car, he went the wrong way. Well, I guess he said he went the wrong way, but I guess... They were trying to imply that he forgot to go to the uh, the press conference because second place doesn't feel like a win and it wasn't even worth celebrating or something like that. Uh, he's like, oh, you guys are reading a bit too much into it. But <laughs> what, what, what if the relationship between Nico Rosberg and Lewis Hamilton is actually like fabricated? Like the one that we see is like this illusion, <laughs> right? And like the, he was, they they were both talked to by Bernie Eccleston. It's like, listen, I need you guys because you guys yeah. are the top team. I need you guys to do it's something like for the me. The cursing conspiracy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. It's like make this like you know WWE like make it like that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we can do that. It's you a, down? He's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, all right, uh, Rosberg, we're gonna make, we're gonna make you like the villain. Yeah, you're the, the villain. Yeah, you're the villain. Are you cool with that? But for a couple million, I will be. All right, yeah. cool. Here you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hitlerberg. Yeah. Reddit likes to call him. Prosberg. Prosberg. <laughs> yeah, I got this quote I got from ESPN. This is from like six days ago. So who knows how these guys feel about each other now. But uh, this was Rosberg on Hamil- Hamilton. He said, I've got a huge respect for him. But, well, we're not best friends at the moment. We're both so competitive that it makes it difficult to be friends because the competition's so extreme. But it was the same back then when we were karting. How many pizzas could we eat? Who could run the fastest from the elevator to the hotel room? It would be a competition all the way, but there was not the surrounding influence with the team, media, and money. So that makes it difficult now. Mm. That's what he said. <laughs> so he used to fight each other about who could eat the most pizza or make each other pee their pants, so I guess. So they're both dicks. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's, likes touching them. It, it's what you said, man. It's like you have this interesting theory about how Lewis might may just be like the ultimate mind gamer, <laughs> mind gamist. Yeah, I think that might be part of the case at least that, <laughs> or that he's just even so good at them that he doesn't even realize or admit to himself that he's doing just, it. Just he just built it into his own personality, just to, to have his that. racing personality. At yeah. least, yeah. <laughs> just to like play games all the time, and then just like keep to himself during the track parade. Yeah, I don't know. It's there was. The, it's all part of the show. It's all part of the show. You think he's like, listening to music in his headphones? No, no. Uh-uh. He's, probably t- he's probably listening to himself, <laughs> like to a pre-recorded speech. <laughs> you are the best. You're better than Nico Rosberg. But you yeah, will that, win. Do you do you have that Alonso quote from today? No, 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 no. I I, did, I, just, I didn't save that one. <laughs> it, it was interesting though. He said something like, uh, "He doesn't envy Rosberg to be his teammate," uh, and that uh, Alonso says Rosberg doesn't have an easy teammate. Yeah, he said he that he wouldn't want Hamilton because he doesn't make a mistake. He's he's focused. He's great with the media. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, didn't that? I I remember reading that, and then I I checked the comments on the subreddit, and I remember si- like it being somewhat um, like misquoted to a certain degree. I'm gonna try. To fi- I'm gonna try to find it. Can Can you throw up this little clip here too? The one, it's on the second page. Yeah, I don't know. Hamilton was Who extra Hamilton polarizing this weekend. Oh, maybe to, yeah, turn this down. But here, this is <laughs> throwing the middle finger. 
Yeah, brutal. <laughs> now that was because. Wait, are we showing this? We can't be showing this. Take this off the screen right now. What are you doing? Well, I, th- I don't know. No, we can't be, be showing this. <laughs> That's good. Sorry, guys. It's, it's partly covered. It should be all right. We got enough sound. Anyways, it's Hamilton throwing throwing the middle finger <laughs> at the Haas. But yeah, uh, he, he was blue flagged. There's see, there's a blue light flashing there, and right. another blue blue light, and another blue light. To good, this is a Gutierrez. Gutierrez, Gutierrez yeah. Hey, take take this off. <laughs> it's not on. Okay. Yeah, Gutierrez said um, that that was bullshit. Hamilton doesn't have any respect. That that's not right. That's that's not racing. Blah blah blah. But. Wait, I guess he, wasn't he, he wasn't showing his his own respect, I guess. Yeah, by respecting the blue flag. Anyway, <laughs> that, that was it. That that's that's well, that's that was one of the few things that really even happened. There was a good like couple battles. Like Kimi Raikkonen did a good job. Mm-hmm. Good for him. He also I guess. got he got upset with Mister Eighteen Year Old Max Verstappen. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it is. I, I think I, I went home that day and I had looked up sort of like what what are the rules for defending and how to defend and yeah I guess yeah that was also that wasn't looked into either right nobody that, yeah nobody no, nobody yeah they, they, no they, they didn't call it. him into the piss or you know they didn't give him any penalty for, no. for that and do you guys think he should have he was a very for that? adamant <laughs> in his post-race interview he's like he said no i only changed direction one time watch it again i only changed the one time <laughs> <laughs> he did it yeah no he didn't <laughs> <laughs> he definitely did not that's funny we, we listened to that bill burr's clip from from <laughs> this weekend he's yelling this this fucking kid who didn't knock the front of the, the other guy's car <laughs> off <laughs> he in. yeah he did though he knocked off part of his front wing that was yeah that was just bad defending he should have just like owned it and been like yeah sorry i forgot yeah that was bad for himself he could have just blown his own tire yeah and then what yeah then he wouldn't have had shit to say <laughs> here's a clip we can throw from the top this is i don't know some more somewhat big news rosberg's re-signed his contract two years here's a clip from clip from nico rosberg tv on youtube oh yeah it's okay Did so you see this clip con- this this we can show the sound for this but yeah. Nothing special, anyways. Yeah. So, uh, Toto Wolf and Nico signing a two-year extension. So now, uh, now they're both they're both done their contract at the end of 2018. Did you see what Wolf had to say about it? So, Brando asked him. Oh, he said that it's going to be an interesting challenge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this might bring up some interesting uh, some points in the last year that make the two guys fight each other harder. Yeah. Oh. That's keeping Raikkonen would say. Yeah, something that didn't really get. No, it, it, wait, hang, hang on a second. Contrasting fortunes. It's, uh, Nico Rosberg signs a, a two-year extension. Danny Kivia gets gets told he will his contract will. Sorry, thank you. Not be no, extended. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> God, he turned into like a slug, didn't he? No, he he's crashing left, right, and center right yeah. after he got demoted. His spirits weren't up. He, he had There's no instant he, rumors. Williams is looking at him though. Really? Why, they are. why would you put yourself to that? I don't know. That's a, ru- it's a rumor, right? Russian rumor. backers, I guess. Money. Yeah. Part of it. Yeah. For sure. But uh, this didn't really get talked about. Oh, it's, it's still related. Uh, Vettel went and inquired about Rosberg's seat for 2018. So, uh, I don't know. A little bit of pressure on Arriva Bene as well. Do you see what his post <laughs> post race thing he had to say? So I guess he he heard about this that Vettel's looking at the Mercedes seat, mm-hmm. German team, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But Riva Bene said something like, uh, "Leave us alone, let let us work in peace." Oh really? <laughs> I guess he's been sweating a little extra recently. Oh man, I know he like smoking he, a few more cigarettes than usual. I know he at one point just point blank stopped giving interviews to the English media, all like all all the. Uh, English language media. He was just. He really? was only like. He's like. Give, he was only f- giving. He doesn't want to answer any questions about James Allison. Yeah, oh, he, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, that's and, and that is like really a. He's definitely under fire for that, and like you know, people were expecting more of the first, fully James Allison built car. Well, the guy's wife died, so at one point, like, what do you? No, as professionals, you want to do like there's certain things that, mm-hmm. he can't help but not. Yeah, you need a little time out. Yeah, yeah wasn't that's, that's Martin Brundle, like, when he was going to go talk to him, 
And he's like, well, it's either, you know, you ask for an interview with Ferrari and they say no, but, you know, when they want to talk, they come to us. <laughs> yeah, he was saying that on the grid just before the race started. True. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that, that's that fiery Italian spirit, though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and you gotta love him yeah. for that spaghetti yeah. culture. Yeah, <laughs> spaghetti culture. That's what Bernie said. Good he's, Lord. he's seen a lot of more of that spaghetti culture back at Ferrari. Uh, <clears throat> this could be pretty interesting, and seems very plausible that Vettel could be looking for Rosberg's seat for 2018. But he's not happy anymore, man. He hasn't. Vettel? Man, well, he doesn't seem like to be happy. He was yeah, very, ha- I mean, he was was very happy at, at the, the end Mercedes of last year. Seat. And he he probably was expecting an increase from last year, uh, uh, an increase in performance. I'm sure he wants to keep racing. That's why he's talking to McLaren. Apparently he knows... McLaren? Uh, so, um, Mercedes, Mercedes, sorry. Apparently he knows somebody who knows Toto Wolf, the mutual friends, and got some sort of inside scoop front through that. I don't know. That's hmm. the story. These are all rumors. All rumors. But if Sebastian Vettel staying at Ferrari till 2018 and then moving to Mercedes is not implausible. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. It's super yeah. plausible. Yeah. And it's probably like what Toto Wolf. Maybe Toto Wolf knew that Vettel asked about it and he so said, what... maybe we should let it end in 2018 and these guys can fight over it. Yeah. Two Germans, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Imagine like an all German team. Imagine a, a Hamilton or... versus Vettel. Team? Imagine, imagine a, a championship winning. To say, let's say, let's say, Lewis two, could end up with hits. two quadruple world champions That's on the it. same yeah, team. Yeah. Eight oh cha- my like god! Eight championships <laughs> in the, in, in, amongst two drivers. Like that would be retarded. That would be another oh, first shit. for Formula One. Something interesting with the Mercedes: the last uh, couple of races, they finished first and fifth, first and fourth, first and third, and now one two. Do you think you're going to finish 1-1 in Germany? <laughs> <laughs> double first pl- the first ever double first place finish. <laughs> it's, it's a tie. Evidence it's, it's points inevitable. towards that. Yeah. <laughs> We've done well, our the, research here. The numbers don't lie. The trends would suggest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> double first place. First ever. <laughs> They'd love it if there was such a thing, right? Yeah. Like they would. <laughs> Mercedes, the first team in Formula One. Who does uh, not to sort of get off topic, but get a, who, get off topic, get who, right who off is, topic. Uh, this next track, who does it really favor in terms of uh, drivers? It's hard. It's kind of in the middle, yeah. Is it? It's like two super long straights, and then there's the in the stadium section. The oh, wait, are, are, are we are we done with with with, with Hungary? Because I'm no. I'm cool with that. No, no. Oh, there's a bit. There's a bit more. There's a bit more. Ross Ross Braun. Oh yeah. He said uh, Ferrari did not give him any solid offer. So that was all rumors too. Mm. Probably just going around the James Allison stuff. But uh, <clears throat> for uh, another thing that didn't get talked about, Ferrari's turbo. Remember the turbo exploded. Yeah. So they were forced by the FIA to reinforce it. So I don't know. Who knows if who did the engineering on that i guess but apparently it's an extra two kilos on the turbo housing alone Holy shit. for reinforcement to keep that together is this some sort of uh step backwards for them i guess um the limit detection oh yeah that didn't See, work they yeah they typed it up whatever whatever and then i don't think they used it once all weekend it's uh it's the wrong it was the wrong solution though who is it one of the days the drone one, yeah. one of the Daves that showed up to um, uh, to watch to the Betty's. race of Betty's, yeah. we're talking about it, and he was a big fan of it. And like I, I, I agree with what he's saying. Like it's, it, it's could work if they're at every corner, maybe, and then, and at every section. Like the problem with those things is that like it just it detects them like a straight line like this, right? Like on a tangent to the curve, so you can't. Yeah. Like, I, I won at that one single point, so. With a twenty centimeter extra window. Yeah, so it, it it's not the right solution. It is good that they're exploring well, things, and they should. I mean, the FIA I should think, be praised for looking at technological ways to enforce these track limits. I think you only really do need it at that single point, though, because <coughs> if you go off the track before or after that, you're way it off the racing your line, line anyways, yeah. and mm-hmm. your time is going to be screwed. But but I guess it didn't work. The baguettes work better. Yeah. Than the than those loops, but. I think the drone solution could work the best. Oh yeah, but we track limit need drones. Need some more guys. Uh, software for that though. Apple, Apple, get into it. <laughs> Apple needs to be get hyped. Yo, I right, so now the now the points gap. Finally, Lewis Hamilton now is leading the world championship. It took him a while. Yeah, can, you, can was, you pull up the uh, the standings? Crawling. The standings? Yeah, yeah. 
but he's I'm now 192 to 168. Now we can really, well, really it was lap 35, but we can now we can say the season's half over. Lap yes. 35 of Hungary, but it's really half over now. There's still half a season left. Mm-hmm. What? This is amazing. Ten more races. <laughs> it is pretty amazing. Yeah, th- these points gaps is pretty. Nobody would have really predicted most of this except mm-hmm. the first two. Even that, that they'd be so close. They're still down to six points. Six points. Six points. Look at and Ricardo and Raikkonen, one point gap. <laughs> Vettel and Raikkonen. Vettel's down four points on him. Look at that. Bad luck Due on all bad luck, yeah. Mostly bad luck. Yeah. Max Verstappen right behind 10 points. Then there's a huge drop off. But... Max, t- teenage Max Verstappen. Look at him go. <laughs> I really do think that there's a there's a chance that um, the massa seat is going to be open, whether oh, or not yeah. whether or not Kvyat will get it or not. But massa seat is going to be open, and I wouldn't blame Jason Button for taking it. <laughs> Serious? No, there's a chance of Kvyat as well. But who wants that guy? Yeah, that guy yeah. seems like a fucking pain in the ass to work with. Yeah. Honest, he's got a bad attitude a yeah. lot of time. Yeah, he gets very angry. That's like apparently why uh, uh, why Duresta like never really like made a break. Apparently he's also like a pain in the ass driver to work with as a driver. <laughs> Frustrated, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I mean, some some of them like the the problem is that like th- these guys like just they just need too much babying sometimes. Like it it, it seems that way. <laughs> Somehow I, I lost it, but I had saved. I think I saw this on Twitter, mm-hmm. but. Some journalist was digging on Sergio Perez's website and okay. f- found a picture that he had, like in like not not sort of visible, but it was somewhere in the available on the website. Yeah, that was him ho- <clears throat> holding a sign or something that said uh, Renault 2017 or something like that, or like that he was celebrating taking that seat. So maybe that was his big announcement that fell through. Remember in Canada there was a whole hype, oh, and his dad was yeah, talking yeah. about he's got some big oh, hype coming up. Shit. So I don't, I don't know. I can't. I lost the picture though, unfortunately. But anyways, that, all that, that's all it was. He was just holding like a piece of cardboard that said Renault or something like that. But whether or not that's the real flows. Hype. But yeah, it seems like he'd want to stay at Force India though. I think yeah, they're yeah. gonna beat Williams this so. year. I think so too. Yeah, well, yeah that's another team chance. in trouble. If they get Holy fourth shit. place, that'd be awesome for them. And then they they get to keep their seat at the. Well, I mean, they they already get to keep their seat at the strategy group. But they they'll extra get to keep it for next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But year after whatever. Yeah. I don't know. It's interesting. Halfway, halfway. Yeah, it's there's, still there's so much more to so go. So much to go. The gaps, like, are yeah, at, right at the front. They're getting like ridiculously close. Something cr- super interesting though is that most except teams for, have... except from 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 Rosberg down. I mean, from Rosberg to Ricardo. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, most teams have um, put this in air quotes, admitted or said that they've quit development on this year. Mm-hmm. But are you allowed to lie about that? I think you are, <laughs> right? Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, you never know what's coming through the pipe with these teams. But most of them are saying that they've they've just given up on this year. Well, hundred percent focus on twenty seventeen. Ferrari's and, looking at twenty eighteen. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, we're talking about te- some teams, some of the bigger teams. Like Ferrari is probably the only one that's come out and publicly admitted it, but Mercedes is working on, tw- on the 2018 car. Oh, yeah. Two year so, evolution. Yeah. Even like probably all the way down to McLaren. Or like McLaren is probably also working. They're, they've been probably doing that since like two years ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they're like, oh well, we suck, so yeah. let's look to the future. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, don't know. I, I have faith in McLaren coming back. It's probably like paired with their road car program doing so well. Mm-hmm. I don't know, it seems like they have to do do something. I don't know. Yeah, they do. And hey, Fernando had a good performance. Did, yeah, there, there, I, there I say that again. Button and Alonso both looking much happier these days. Yes, <laughs> a yeah. little bit of joy back in their faces. Yeah. And and you yeah, know, joking that, around a little bit. And you know, you know, you don't but, know how large of a development there is if uh, Honda's going to be able to do. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. they're finally showing like they're getting some pace. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and after like. If if it is like how they have predicted it, so he here was the re- like the this the, like the word coming from Honda this entire time is like they're like yo we just have these fundamental problems like like we know what the problems are it's just like we know we have to fix them we don't know how to fix them yet we're working on fixing them but once we do fix them watch out yeah and hopefully hopefully it's that hopefully it's as simple as that 
and then what happened with Button? Yeah, I was just gonna say he he was happy at least at the start of the weekend. Yeah. He was yeah. pretty pissed. He's the only DNF for the for the race. <laughs> That uh, I don't know. He is, got he got is, caught up in the new radio rules. Uh, yeah. Okay. Part partially, and he had a brake problem that his brake pedal went to the floor, so he had to stop to get it fixed. I think. Oh my and god. And then he had to talk on the radio again, so he had to do a drive through, which is essentially like you get to choose whether or not you want to penalize yourself to talk on the radio. Oh my That's god. That's the new rule. That's the new and, rule. Yeah. So I guess for those that didn't know, the new rule is that if you talk on the radio. Uh, without asking, I guess, if you right. get in trouble for that, then you're getting a 10 second stop and go now, right? Or is it Somewhere. five seconds? Something like that. But a stop and go. Anyway. It's a stop and go, I think, yeah. Before it was just like 10 seconds added to your time. Now it's a stop and go. And if you want to talk about something that's banned, you're allowed to just drive through the pits without stopping, mm. but you must be in the pits and then you can say whatever you want as you're driving through. So I guess you have oh, like about 15 seconds yeah. or whatever to just... What's on, what's on <laughs> yeah, and if you think you can make up 15 <laughs> seconds or you think you can keep the car from yeah. breaking by huh. not switching the switches, that's the new rule. So anyway, he apparently he fixed his brakes and then he had another problem oil with, leak. The, with the engine. He had the, an oil leak. And then no. he, he said also that uh, the oil leak happened for enough laps that... The, he, I guess he has some other button or something I never heard of as a feature on the engine before is that he was pumping more oil into the engine. So I guess he has controls to change the flows and directions of oil in the engine. So oh he was, God. he said that he was squirting oil in to keep it lubricated because of the leak. But that anyways, the couple laps that he was out on the, with the oil leak that, uh, the engine's probably finished. Yeah. They might use it for practice, I guess next week. <laughs> but I don't know. Uh, Jensen, you will have to stay out, stay out. He's like, oh, oh, really? Really? This is this is dangerous. <laughs> if I would have thought the brakes would have been a, a danger issue. That's <laughs> <laughs> not. No. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Here's an interesting fact, though, about the excitement level or whatever. Counting only dry races this year, so not not the two wets or whatever, but there's been 38 more overtakes on track. So far this season, than all of 2015. Oh, that, all of 2015, all and, of, and we're halfway through the season. Yeah, so I guess nine dry races then, right? Mm-hmm. Fully nine fully dry races. And hmm. last year there was 20 races or whatever. So. 20, something like that. 19, <laughs> 19. more, way more passing, anyways. So yeah, we're we're past and halfway through the season. The amount of overtakes, it's kind of cool. Yeah, that's all. And no one really expected. Like, what fundamentally changed that would. No, I remember, we, if anything, we were saying that was just going to be a bit of a dull year. Like, yeah, yeah. In, in between year. Yeah, it's but maybe, because, maybe year. because of that. Maybe it's because it is like a, a bit of a transition year. Some teams like speculating. You know, they're, they're not using all their resources for this year to compete. Right. So it's maybe le- le- lets other teams catch up. Mm. You know, if they the, want to be the, except for Mercedes. Mercedes is like, no, no we, yeah, we'll, we'll still, win. Yeah, we'll still win. We'll win. <laughs> the opened up tire strategy has got to be part of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The Choosing your 13, yeah. 13 tires of three different how, kinds and using them almost whenever you want. I even forgot about it because I, I take it for granted now. So easy to take for granted, but it's not. like That, mm-hmm. is, that has significantly changed how the weekend has progressed for many, many races. I like it. Do you see what Pat Simmons is saying now? No. Because they weren't able to afford to participate in the testing. So the, he's been complaining the loudest that uh, Mercedes, Red Bull, and Ferrari are going to get too much of an advantage by being the cars that are participating in the testing. And mm. even though, as we said before, the testing is going to be blind. So they'll just be putting on blank, no color tires and just right. drive as fast as you can, see how you like them. And Interesting. Th- and all the data itself will be open. Mm. So... Anyways, oh yeah, but, so so Pat Simmons. Anyways, he's calling for next year instead of having what well, we have this year. Just have a fully open tire, tire uh, rules, I guess whatever you call it, fully open, so that let teams choose whichever of the five type types they uh, like instead of Pirelli to mi- yeah to mitigate some of the uh, advantage that the teams would have. Because mm. this year, as we know, like Pirelli's been a couple weeks before each race, mm-hmm. they put out here's our three nominations choose how many of each you want and then they make them and bring them next year allow all five at all races surely he must know that that that's going to present some logistical challenges uh why would it though they're they're going to be making all those types of anyways 
So yeah. they just have to, you know. No, but they right now the the reason why they like chose like the the different like compounds and whatever for so many races ahead is because it takes some tire time to make those tires. They're not like yeah, they so they can still out. nominate the t- the teams can say like we want these these and these. In eight weeks, bring them, and then they bring them. I guess so. There's no different, just that they're bringing more different mm-hmm. types. The same well, amount of tires, still 13 types. Everyone's still going to be on those ultra Yo, 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 yo. yo. <laughs> maybe, maybe it can be, maybe it can be like a tire lottery. Where Pirelli just brings like so many of each compound to every race, and then like you're like you're just gambling to see which ones you get, <laughs> how many sets of softs or super softs or ultra softs. That would or, actually be kind of exciting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah, they, that, yeah, 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 yeah. Pirelli, we've got to get. We've so yeah. <laughs> well, they, they said last year the whole formula, the whole, the whole construction everything is going to be different Listen, if, gonna it's gonna, if it's going to be ridiculous and, 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 and foolish why not just go full retard with it <laughs> Pirelli <laughs> show up with a, a just like a, a set number of tires to each Grand Prix <laughs> Then they just go up for grabs, Le, Le Mans style. Like each team, like each so each team <laughs> you run out and punch each other in the face and fight for it. <laughs> just yeah. try to grab like a bunch of tires. No, no, no tires. you know why? Because Manor is just going to be sitting with three wheels <laughs> yeah. the, the entire race. He's like, well, like, the last yeah, this one. is what we stopped with. <laughs> I think some would argue that Pirelli's already gone, maybe full retired for the last two races this year. They just announced today the nomination. So for Brazil. They've chosen medium, hard, and soft. I'm sorry, hard, medium, and soft. And for Abu Dhabi, on the complete opposite side of the spectrum, ultra soft, soft, and super soft, ultra soft, super, and super, and well, soft. Well, at least that's interesting. That should be interesting. And you're kind of <laughs> putting a flip on it for the last two races. <laughs> why not? Whoops. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, but yeah, why not? It's going to be completely, yeah, I don't know. It's just different. You would mm-hmm. expect the, almost the opposite for both circuits. Abu Dhabi, you want the longer wear tires, I think. I don't know. It's interesting. <laughs> well, I mean, those ultra softs were lasting a long time, too. Yeah. More, more so than anyone expected. Oh, yeah. 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 A ton more. Hey, uh, Lewis Hamilton, Nico Rosberg, huge fans of them. Lots of lots of people. Like, uh, like it's usually like the lower teams that choose like the harder compounds, right? Mm-hmm. To try to like just stay on as long as possible hmm. that's gonna that's what they try to do can we throw up this picture now so there was um isn't it supposed to be tomorrow is the halo vote is it tomorrow they're definitely doing something. tomorrow's the 20 yeah, i think it's tomorrow 27 july <coughs> i think tomorrow it is <laughs> this picture i found on reddit i think it was uh this is the ej11 yeah, they ran <laughs> they ran this wing for those that are listening it's basically a mini wing about a half meter wide just over the driver's head sitting in front of him but it was banned this is on the i guess eddie jordan's car i don't know what year this was but this was banned for blocking visibility and whatever other looking reasons ridiculous <laughs> looking retarded i guess yeah but yeah. Did you see the, the talk about the uh the halo presentation this weekend no so the the fom sorry the the fia forced all the drivers this this weekend at hungary to go to a presentation it's about an hour long i think that they showed them apparently some shocking graphic photographs of racing car accidents and we're trying to show that really we we should be backing this halo we need it this is is, why why apparently the conclusion from all of their research over the past two or three years whatever is that the halo saves Lives of drivers about seventeen percent. Seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. The the only really driver quote that I heard was that How? Hamilton Hamilton changed his mind. Mm-hmm. Remember he said it looks bad. We we shouldn't be doing this against the spirit. Blah blah blah. Yeah. He changed his mind now. He said, yeah, I guess we have to. Some something, something like that. Like reluctantly, so probably. Yeah. yeah. But I guess it's gonna be the teams that are gonna vote on it anyways. And if they vote against, like Red Bull said, they're going to vote against. Christian Horner said he's going to vote against it. That the FIA can just veto that on safety grounds and force it in anyways. Oh, they could. But I th- oh, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure the decision's tomorrow because the teams all need to know because they got to start building they these cars. Build it. Yeah. Apparently, the halo affects aero drastically. So 
they have they have to start the car from zero with it on there, right? If it's gonna uh, be yeah. on there. This looks like a series of pool noodles. Yeah, it doesn't look that good. Yeah. No, it looks awful. I, mean, I think like the photograph mockups or Photoshop mockups we looked at a couple of weeks ago where their halos are on the cars and uh painted the same color as the livery makes it sort of blend in a little bit better, it looks mm-hmm. a little better. Rather than having like a black yeah, black right. sausage on top. Yeah. But, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And you know teams are going to start incorporating that into the arrow somehow. Of course. <laughs> Unless it's very they specific. Should. They should and ought to. Like it should be sort of Yeah, why yeah. Why wouldn't they I guess, but Yeah. Huh. I don't know. They're going to try to like get an advantage. Like if it's there and if it's mandatory, they're going to be like, "All right, let's see how we can work it in with the with the rest of the arrow yeah. package." It's under that that, uh, that is understandable. Like and I, I can see some teams like going maybe even like perhaps too aggressively with it at least the first year like try something ridiculous and see if it sticks. Yeah, they're gonna be and then the FIA is be like, well, we don't like how you did that, so you're gonna have to do something else. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe like Lewis was the only one who talked about it, so maybe he's just trying to reverse some of the polarization <laughs> on him this weekend. <laughs> try to talk positively. Can we show <laughs> this next clip. We got a lot of clips today. It is a clip it's, show. <laughs> it's a clip show, guys. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. This is a clip weekend, I guess. Yeah. It was, it was like 70 laps of that race was, like, it was a bit a bit too much. So this is, this is from... This is not some official shit. Yeah, this is just Lewis's Instagram. This is him leaving, <laughs> leaving the circuit, though, polarizing everybody. You got about 15, 20 people standing around his motorcycle. He has some sort of Bluetooth start on it. I guess. Oh, uh, he's oh doing, a God, doing a burnout. He's so cool, guys. I think that. <laughs> what are those ultra socks? Almost ran over yeah. two people. <laughs> Almost ran over a few people taking off there. He doesn't care. <laughs> no. He's he's Lewis Hamilton. The two sides of Lewis Hamilton. Oh man. <laughs> Where's okay? So now he's lead, he's comfortably in the lead of the championship. Yeah. Uh, Looking good. They both have five victories each at this point. Mm. Nico Rosberg and Lewis. They're mm. even with victories mm-hmm. so far this year. He's definitely going to go to Germany feeling confident. Yeah. Um, but as we go into Germany, I just want to... So, so we didn't have a German Grand Prix last year mm-hmm. because of what we were talking earlier with... Uh, uh, Cuts with, money, with, with buddy. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> the German Grand Prix. The way it was supposed to work is that because not one single venue could support it, like could support the the, con- the, the, yeah, the contract, like m- for many years in a row. Yeah. So what they were doing is the Nurburgring, uh, fantastically historical track, uh, was alternating with Hockenheim, mm-hmm. and they were like just doing one year each, hosting the the German Grand Prix. Um, and at one point the Nürburgring said we don't have any more money mm-hmm. that was last year so then Bernie was like well you don't have more any more Grand Prix <laughs> and they didn't host one last year so the last time that the German Grand Prix happened was actually two years ago <clears throat> yeah. in, uh, in, in 2014 now that was a pretty alright race so judging by the last race at the Hockenheim ring, it sh- it you know, it should be pretty good. So what was the atten- the attendance was something like forty thousand though, not 50, very good. Fifty two thousand, still not, I think not they're great. Expecting about forty this weekend. I, I read. I think they need forty to break even. Wow. I think that's what it is. Man, it's... or it's they need fifty and they're expecting forty, something like that. But not good. No, it's not looking good for them. The you get, look at like the hundred twenty thousand that came out to Silverstone. Well, no, and, and like you know, almost two hundred thousand in Canada, but, even. But look, look at if if there, if there is okay, um, Hockenheim, <laughs> they rebuilt it and now it has like almost like a this stadium section, uh, with like huge grandstands. That was, was built in the eighties, though. But yeah, but it, still, like that was it was so cool to see when it was full, but. 2014, mm. it did not look full, and mm. it looked like it was sad. Yeah, it was like pretty sad to see. Um, but having said that, uh, last year's race was pretty good. Uh, we had a, we had quite a bit of, a- of action. Um, Nicole Rosberg got mm. the pole position. 
And just going through, just, just I was just going through like the details of the race. It's like it, it just brought back some some memories because there's a there's a few names. Most most of the people that are that were on the grid back then are still on the grid, but there's still like a a, a few names that that we remember of all of all oh. the F1, like Max Chilton. He was around. <laughs> Kamui Kobayashi on his return to Formula One that, that one year driving for Caterham. He was there too. Pastor Maldonado, who could remember him, who could forget him. <laughs> uh, Adrian Sutil like uh, had 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 a big accident. There's uh, been a, a lot of name changes recently. Jules Bianchi, of course, he's, he's, he was still around back then. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like Max Chilton just in uh, Toronto last week at the Indy race. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Kevin Magnussen back then was driving for a McLaren. Remember, this was the year that he went to McLaren. They got fired from F1 and then came back <laughs> yeah. for this year. So really, I mean, to him, it must like it's like Jack Jones represent like the last. So the last time he was in Formula One in in Germany was the last time that this race happened. Was the last German Grand Prix like as. A, 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 <laughs> Uh, that occurred because there wasn't one in between anyways so yeah cool little interesting race i don't know if you uh, uh if you remember but uh, uh lewis had a problem and he had to start from like 20th or something at one point he was like down to 20th and he like managed to climb back to third so that was like one of the like one of his wow. like heroic drives uh, uh that year um <clears throat> but uh yeah, lo- lots of action it's still it was it was pretty good uh I think more or less, I think like the consensus, I think, is that the circuit kind of went downhill since it got like Tokyo fight. Right. Yeah, I think so, can, too. Can we like, I agree on the uh, here's another this clip picture down here at the bottom. Yeah. Can we see? Can we see like that the, Ost curve? The, no, but so, you, this, you, don't, you don't get the depth of that. You should look for like uh, here. Let me find you a picture of like what the circuit layout was. Yeah, if you find, if you search for the <clears throat> Hockenheim layout. It was called the Hockenheim Ring because it was kind of a big ring that was... Uh, I, think, I think they just some, call all their circuits rings. Yeah, but it was a ring, though. It was like six-kilometer ring. There you go. This that one. one. That was the original. So yeah. that Ost curve, see the very top there? Yeah, right there. That Ost, that just means east in German. That photograph that you're looking at, beside, like, no, the, the other tab? To the left. One more tab left. Yeah. This is it now. So well, in, that in was two, it in, like four in, years ago. Yeah. This is in 2012, that photograph. But uh, in 2001 and two, it was just decided the track was too quick, too dangerous. Mm. The people in the the bottom part here, because the track was so long, it was like six kilometers or something. Yeah. There's only like 40 laps. So you're not, as a spectator, you're not getting to see the cars go by very much. Right. That whole part is through the forest. So it was dangerous. This, this, There's this no this seats up there. Part. Yeah. There's like four super straights, basically. Jesus. And then a lot of, also a lot of cars... Uh, didn't finish this race because you're on full throttle uh, so much yeah. of the time. So it's like just there's a whole bunch of stuff that yeah kills the engine. Yeah, wow. yeah. Wow. So if you go back back to look at the layout that on the left, that's the new that's the new version. That's, yeah, that's, that's so now so it's about four so kilometers. You see, you see like where 60, one fit, fits ah. inside the other. So they basically like it used to go whoop all the way out there, right, right, right. but they just okay. chopped it out like with like a freaking yeah. exacto knife okay. almost, and went like it's a big long curvy, yeah, curvy straight now. Cool. Oh, yeah, there you, you can see the over, over overlay there. Yeah. So the the, the old oh, it goes off the page. <laughs> Even yeah. The other version. But yeah, well, it was awesome on TV because the cars are just fighting like full speed, going through quick chicanes and stuff. But Juan Pablo Montoya was uh, was saying that like he he really really liked the the, the forest section because it it really it, it went yeah, through the a forest. It was fun like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's, like. And like you know, some like waviness because you went full throttle. So like even if it's just like a little bit of like elevation change, that you feel it a lot more. And those mm-hmm. chicanes were were challenging, and but it's it became like a a safety concern as well because mm. if somebody like went off into the forest like in the past, like it, it, it's hard to like retrieve them or whatever, <laughs> and retrieve their cars right. and all, and all well, that. Well, then the drivers would be taken away by wild boars yeah, yeah <laughs> most like take, just take him out and yeah. he's gone and yeah and they do not get returned to the pits no they die <laughs> or become leader of uh, wild boars in germany why not they have a race <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah it's it's it, I, don't, I don't know i didn't really like it when when this layout was first introduced mm-hmm. 
um, but we still managed to get some pretty good racing in there. So I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. No, this is yeah, really yeah. interesting. Yeah. Another back-to-back -back race too should be good. Yeah, Ooh. this weekend, Ooh. and then summer break. Oh yeah, yeah. Then 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 no F one for four weeks. Four weeks. So there's gonna be a lot of shit talking, boys. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Get your pitchforks. Yeah, <laughs> you're just stretching in. Yeah. Um, German Grand Prix, good venue. I mean, I'm glad that they're still holding on. I I wouldn't want to see them off the calendar, uh, mm -hmm. like like we had last year. I think there's no. I think there's value in going to Germany. Too bad that the German fanhood is going down. But maybe 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 they'll be re replaced with some friendly Dutch men and women that would come and watch the race now because that's you know kind of close Hopefully. to them. Yeah. Where is uh, Hockenheim? I think it's they are. It's in Baden Württemberg. Baden Württemberg. Baden Baden Württemberg. Yeah, it's outside. It's yeah. a, not a very big town, I don't think. It is in Baden. It's kind of <laughs> oh, okay. out in the fields, kind of. Okay. Am I saying that? Baden Württemberg. Baden. -Ver it's but it's in Bavaria. It's close. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've away with the, with your words. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think we're gonna have a lot more to talk about next week. Going into the break. Oh when, well. The, uh, there's the gonna halo, be the testing the is gonna be gonna happening. Be yeah. Some, yeah. Some of that another race to talk about pull up this chopper picture i forgot about this one this is pretty cool do you, do you guys it, see this it is a five hour drive from amsterdam apparently <laughs> the hockenheim ring this is something i found uh, someone posted from flight radar 24 is you can just kind of go look up airplane registrations and see where they've been you can it's i guess this is a lot of public information this is the uh the recorded uh, flight, path. flight path of the uh, the F one helicopter this past weekend. Wow! So you can kind of see it, like the loop up up at the top corner, like like the... right when the race starts, and they do that big yeah the big pan <laughs> pan up of coming over the hill over the town. <laughs> it was kind of cool. That's sweet. going around the track a few times. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, sixty mile an hour track. But anyway, whatever. It's cool. Just cool to see. This I guess is you can cool. watch that live. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. I don't know. I like. Silly stuff like that. <laughs> oh, I think we have uh, uh, a, a, a caller. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, shit. You guys want to take it? Why not? Do it. Yeah. Just get, get him to call us when he's ready. Um, and yeah, this is something that we do, folks. Maybe maybe we should say that more often. Yeah. If you, <laughs> as long as we're alive, we have Skype on, so you can you can anybody can just find us. Flat Out Fever Podcast. Just uh, uh, you know, give us a call if you have something to say about the show or yeah. or some something to contribute. We'd love to hear from you guys. How about uh, how about Bernie's mother-in-law? Oh, 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 that's Man. dark, dude. Oh, how God. about how about that story? Jeez, you guys didn't hear Bernie Ecclestone's mother-in-law mm -hmm. is being kidnapped for a very large ransom now she's she's brazilian yes. because his his wife of, for now is brazilian he's brazilian right uh this brazilian lawyer and i guess she works for the circuit somehow the brazilian circuit I, she says she's like works in some sort of promo or advertising or whatever whatever but i guess they probably knew who she was and who her um daughter's husband was the thing is that this <laughs> bernie's mother-in-law is probably about 20 to 30 years younger than him <laughs> his wife is 38 years old he's 84 years old good lord <laughs> as far as we know apparently I mean, they're asking I mean, for 36 nobody, million i think i think i think to, to find out like bernie's real age like you're gonna have to like cut him in half like once he dies Check, and like count, count the, the rings, rings. <laughs> Apparently they're asking for thirty six million. I don't know if that's dollars or reais or what. No, it wouldn't be reais. Thirty six million something. A lot of them. Hey hello, David. Hello David. David. Hello, hello, folks. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. David. <laughs> we were just talking about Bernie Ecclestone's mother in law. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> that's you've heard. That's a, well, that's a man you don't want to mess with. No. <laughs> 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 yeah, by the end of the negotiation, like the 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 uh, these kidnappers are gonna end up paying him. Yeah. Like somehow <laughs> it's gonna end up like that. You yeah, just, <laughs> just squint and say keeper. 
Yeah. <laughs> give her a squint. <laughs> I, I didn't like her turkey anyway. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> David. Yes. You're an F1 fan from I am. from Canada. From well, from here. From uh, Yeah. That's a that's a hard thing to do, isn't it? Very yeah. rare, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Quite rare. You know, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, that didn't really have anything to say. Go for it. <laughs> no, no, I was I was going to say uh, David, we <laughs> um uh, we've been wanting to have you on the show. We've been talking like uh, on Reddit for a while, and I know that it almost happened a couple times, but then we get busy or whatever. Uh, sorry about that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, but I, I, you you posted like a really interesting um, response in like one of the threads that we posted on on Reddit about uh, um, what an F one should look like. What a, what a, what a, what a competent HD F one stream should look like. And you had some very valid points that I th I think that it, it, here here's the thing. And we've been hammering on this for a while that. The people that have decent F1 coverage, they just simply don't know what the rest of the world has to put up with. <laughs> with the, you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because yeah. if if you have it like a nice like multi-screen capabilities with like the pit lane channel at, at your discretion yeah. or whatever, like you're you're happy. Like you're you're, you're probably right. like, you know, having having a great experience being an F1 fan and like finding it that much easier yeah, to follow, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Be amazing. Yeah. But if you don't, we've done it at home a few times, but it's a lot of work. Yeah, to do it that way, yeah. it's a ton of work, especially where we live. And like natively, like Canada doesn't really have um, uh, that option. We don't with, T with TSN right now, our, our local broadcaster. They have this the sky coverage as far as a pre-show, the race, and post-show. But we're still missing out on all the other amazing content that we could be having we could be having the pit lane channel we could be having like a, some sort of yeah. driver tracker uh official timing all going on at once and believe me if you've if you're a casual fan out there and you've never tried this and you want to like get more into f1 try watching a race like just with just with two with two screens on one with the with the world feed with the normal race coverage and then another one with the um with the onboard channel and you'll like immediately like just see so much more of the sport well, it, it's incredible because uh, in the last couple of years, I've gotten into WEC much more. Oh, yeah? And WEC has a streaming service. I think I paid 45 bucks Canadian for the whole season. Wow. And they've got exactly that. Exactly that. Really? And it's it's incredible commentary. It's... Oh. Folks, we, 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 we're fearing that this could happen. <laughs> Some technical difficulties. What? David, are you if you're still there, don't worry. Just keep talking. We'll get back. To, we'll let you know when you're back. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had this this weekend. We didn't end up throwing it up. But like having this, the whole race synced up like this. Oh, hold on. It would oh. be so great to have every race. Just a driver tracker. Basically, well, it's in the bottom corner there, but... <laughs> It, it's too much really work to to sync everything up oh david are you back i am oh, I, I never are. lost you guys I, oh sorry I, I, i'm watching you guys on skype right now actually, <laughs> so. okay so we're back we're back with you david but yeah i was just saying that uh, the wec has like the service and it's awesome and v8 supercar has the service and moto gp um, and that's just the paid stuff. Like, I was just saying earlier, I watched the, uh, the Toronto Indie last week free on YouTube. They put up all the sessions live. They had an eight hour stream of the track for Friday for all practices of all the series there. Like, come on. You know, it's not just IndyCar though. I mean, yeah, DTM not. and F3 put their stuff up on YouTube. How about, how about the whole world that exists outside of motorsports? <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like I, that, no, that, no, I honestly, I think it's sad that we're sitting here and, and, and we live in a world where this, what we're talking about, is available for things like baseball, but not Formula One. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? Like, if you're, a face, if you're a baseball fan, you can download the app, you know, pay like a yearly subscription 
for some sort of nominal fee, like 50 bucks or something. I don't know how much it is, but it's around there. And you can watch all the coverage with like basically like similar. Like, yeah, if you MLB at bat is three bucks a month or $20 a season. That's even cheaper than I thought. So we got, got a list here for, we looked at a whole bunch of sports just to compare to F1. They all have service. And you'd Except think F1. you'd think that like uh, something some type of similar fee like sports like baseball would be less inclined to do the streaming thing. That's it. Yeah. And, th- and that's like the thing that kind of worries me about this whole situation is that you would be more inclined to have a worldwide a worldwide sport having the streaming service for everyone. Instead, it's taken over by the more popular. Uh, yeah, go for it. I, th- I think that's a great point because uh, baseball has so much tradition wrapped up in it as mm. a sport, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And and F one and and motorsports in general has has quite a bit of that as well. Right. So exactly, if if baseball can pick up on that and say, you know, look, these people want coverage on demand. You know, and why is Formula it. One so far behind? Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This list with full coverage includes sports like cricket and horse no, racing dude, no, and no, rugby dude, as well. Is there like a raccoon behind you right now? A uh, that would be one of my three ferrets. Probably. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it looked like I'm, a raccoon I'm for in a second. I'm my office right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Also known as cat snakes. <laughs> the cat snakes. Yep. The wild cat yep. snake. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry to interrupt there, Danny. <laughs> I'm surprised you can actually see them because I can't see them on my camera. So. It's just like very, very briefly off to the edge for a second. There was a little, a little face poked out. Uh, <laughs> David, I actually, there is one thing that I wanted to ask you since, like, since we basically, like, since we started talking, like, so you, like, are you from uh, Whitehall? Or, so you, you live like up north, man, in like one of the territories. Yeah. Oh, I, I lived in I lived in Yellowknife for about ten years. I I just moved down to uh, I just moved down to Calgary about two uh, two months ago. So. You must have been the only person up there that even knew about F one. <laughs> you must have been like the the, the, the F one fan club of Yellowstone must have been one person. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I was actually the uh, the F one priest up there, so oh, yeah. to speak. <laughs> Every nice. time I left, we had about three or four people that uh, we got together and we did the Formula One races at each other's houses. Oh, nice. would there you go. And we'd, every couple of weeks, we'd rotate between houses. So that's wicked. Yeah. That's awesome. Were, were you like baptizing people? It's like ah, <laughs> now yeah, you're, you're in the Formula One. <laughs> no, but I kept uh, I kept prophesizing. And, yeah. <laughs> I eventually hooked a couple of people, so That's my so girlfriend cool. has turned into a, a beast as well. <laughs> uh, she she didn't watch any sort of motorsports before, and then uh, about a month and a half ago, she woke me up at 6 a.m. to watch Quali. So. Nice! Oh, cool, right <laughs> on. Once you make this step into Quali, that's when you know. That's a keeper, yes. man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so I had a question for you in, in that regard. How did you? What was your process t- to getting your girlfriend or friends into Formula One? How did you introduce the sport to them? Do you, were you just like, "Oh, come and watch a race, and then see how it goes"? Or, well, I, I think part of it is my enthusiasm. Mm-hmm. Um, I I watch all the races, mm-hmm. um, and and that that helps quite a bit. Um, I've got an open door. Um, I let people know when races are, um, and. There's, there's all kinds of um, very accessible content out there for people, like Rush, for example. Right. Uh, a yeah. lot of people have seen it, but they don't make the, the connection between um, Formula One and a movie, right? Right, right. Yeah. Uh, at there's least also modern stuff F1, at least. Like, the, the Senna documentary, everybody likes that Senna, one. Senna, yeah. that sort of thing, right? Um, and, and for me, I find the technology is what really gets people interested oh, the cool. you know the the not so much the 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 motorsports aspect although i mean that's that's great but you know the idea that you've got 15 or 16 guys changing four tires <laughs> and wiping a visor <laughs> in under three seconds is just that's that phenomenal. blows people away yeah you know and it, it's it, it's something that F1 should be doing more to like capture that. It's it it's almost ridiculous that okay. So you go you go on 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 Reddit right, mm-hmm. and you see that every once in a while, like it's almost like 
every few months somebody posts like a picture or like a, you know a, a gif or of um a formula one pit crew changing tires and it goes all the way up to the first page of uh, uh like to of all and and people are like, wow, this is amazing, blah, 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 blah right? Yeah. Like, and, and it generates some, like, a huge amount of interest yeah. for a second. And nobody's there to capitalize on, on that, yep. that curiosity and yeah. say, you know what? Watch more. Like, you think that's crazy? Watch this. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> or even like well, when... Uh, these, let's, let's, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to mention ahead. like when uh, a few times like a steering wheel from Formula One has been posted to our pictures or whatever and gets to the front. And people right. are like, holy crap, like this thing looks insane. Yeah. But yeah, another smaller point I was going to make was that like, why do we have to do that? Like, why do we yeah. have to explain to people why the sport is so great? And why, why, why isn't the sport doing that itself? <laughs> right. Why, yeah. And that's like a, a very weird thing about this sport that it should be able to take off on its own. But now we have to like I explain it to people. Yeah. I think there's so many layers to the sport, though. Mm. I mean, you've got you've got the team aspect, you've got the business aspect, you've got the. Frankly, a, a lot of us watch it because it's a soap opera. Yeah, it's, re <laughs> it's wrestling but real. Yeah. Right? We actually like, said frankly, exactly that today. Yeah. <laughs> more you off track know. action than on this weekend. Um, it, it, it's a sport that happens as much in the courtroom as on the track. Yeah, and mm. and that's something that is very difficult to to get people into but i find through talking about the technology i mean williams and red bull are, have are playing around with aerodynamic paint this year right like yeah. the, just that concept <laughs> alone is incredible yeah. and i think once you blow people's minds and you just keep funneling them all this information yeah. that just keeps blowing their minds they go well hey that sounds interesting yeah yeah. You know, I, I was uh, I was out with some friends and uh, we were having some drinks and having a good time. And the one guy was asking me about um, Formula One. We started about podcasts and Bill Burr came up and then he started talking about Formula One. I was like, yeah. oh, I do a Formula One podcast. He's like, oh, can you help me with this sport? <laughs> like, can, you, can you hold my hand and take me through the process? I'm like, what, what is it about the Formula One that's so great? And I was like. Oh man, there's so many. Yeah, what you were saying, David, was like there's so many layers to it. It's like, oh, you got this tire strategy, you got who's your driver. Like, there's so many small. And they're like, wow, I didn't, I didn't know any of this. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't know the sport offered this sort of cool. It's like no other sport in the world, right? Like, if you looked at yeah. baseball, soccer, mm -hmm. hockey, they all kind of do the same thing. Yeah. Put the ball in the net, score the basket. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. And Formula mm -hmm. One just doesn't do any of that it doesn't it just doesn't <laughs> not even close yeah. no, who, who, not who, can, who can get there first yeah but wait, <laughs> but wait. do you have the right tires on <laughs> yeah yeah no it's, talking on the radio yeah <laughs> it's like, oh, come on man <laughs> it's no, it, it would be great I, I, actually hang on a second I, I just out of personal curiosity and and, and the, our listeners that some of them most of them are not actually from canada uh just I just want to get a – so Yellowknife is way up north. And, and, I, and I'm not saying like – you know, people think of like Canada as being a pretty cold place, and it is. It's not that it isn't. It, it definitely is. But most people live like sort of within 100 kilometers of the American border. So not yeah. like it's, – it's, it's cold here, but on average is not as – like it's just maybe a little colder than most of the north of the U.S., However, you were like right up there, man. How is it like? How's it like up there? Like, what's what's Yellowknife like? Is it ever turn to nighttime? Uh, actually, yes. Um, <laughs> if, you go, if you go a little bit further, then that's when you get the twenty-four hour daylight and uh, and I the was, converse, the twenty-four hour night. I was up near um, Fort I, Mac like two years ago. It's it was about twenty-one hours of daylight up there. <laughs> yeah, I've got a friend up in. I've got friends up in Inuvik. Oh no! Oh my god! And that's that's even further. <laughs> um, and they have a sunrise festival every year. Oh, um, when the when, first sunrise the, of the year. It's, it's, I, I mean, the first time the sun comes up after twenty some days. Oh <laughs> man! <laughs> <laughs> Get it! I'm out of here. <laughs> like. That that was the part that got me. It's not the cold; it's the the lack of sunlight. Yeah. Um, up in Yellowknife during the winter, the sun comes up at about ten a.m. and 
and uh, just kind of peeks over the horizon and then sets at about three in the afternoon. No, <laughs> why? And the rest, like, but people go about their daily lives. I'm sure, like, bars must be quite popular there over yeah. the winter. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> How much is yes. a pint of beer, Yellowknife? Just somehow. Uh, about ten bucks for a Guinness. <laughs> okay, that's not too outrageous. But I know the most same is here. Yeah, it's pricey. It's pricey. <laughs> yeah. But uh, for the for but, the yeah. listeners here, the uh, Wikipedia is telling me you're only about four hundred kilometers south of the Arctic Circle. Well, two hundred fifty yeah. miles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Less than an F one distance away. <laughs> <laughs> Or, sorry, slightly, slightly more. Slightly more units of measurement here. Yeah, like, <laughs> one, one, uh, one on a bed race distance is away. <laughs> yeah. So, so when me and my fiance drove down here, we uh, we drove twenty one hours straight through to oh to move to Calgary. Wow. Jeez. Yeah. The population nineteen thousand two hundred thirty four in Yellowknife. Holy, that's like my neighbor. That's my neighborhood's population. <laughs> <laughs> look it up. Oh man! Um, have you gone to a Canadian Grand Prix uh, yet, David? I have not been to the Canadian Grand Prix Ooh. yet. I've been to the U.S. Grand Prix. Oh and, no way! Uh, oh, Wait, which one, Indy I'm... or or Coda? Austin. Nice. Hmm. Yes. Which one did you go to? Uh, like the first one or? Uh, twenty thirteen, I think. That was the year that uh, Heike came back to fill in for Kimmy. Oh, oh cool. yeah. 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 Right. So yeah, I that, think that, that was that did happen. Huh. That, did, yeah. that, that that was a great race. Which yeah. is which was great cuz I I have a bit of a soft spot for Heike, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got so cl- he got so close to F1 stardom. And then Yeah. 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 D- didn't Yeah, and then I've also been to the Italian Grand Prix at Monza. So, oh, wicked. Yeah. How's that? Awesome. It was awesome. It was really awesome. I, I heard oh, that. I heard that Monza is like a like you gotta go. Yeah, it's it's uh, more like a festival. That right? that and Spa are the two old tracks, right? Yeah. And Monza's Monza is just outside of Milan, and it's this this park. Mm-hmm. They've turned it into this uh, this park. They've basically put a a, a big cement wall around it, mm-hmm. and uh, you literally walk into the sound of GP two through the trees nice. it's so awesome which so, what year were you there in italy uh that would have been three years ago it would have been 2014 yes oh, it cool. was 2014 because it was the first year of the v8 the v6s oh cool, cool so i saw the last of the v8s and the first of the v6s so <laughs> yeah oh, so did we, we in canada yeah, we did too here <laughs> which was <laughs> which is pretty sweet very nice contrast yeah to yeah i'm so glad i heard the v8s before oh, uh, man. before yeah. they disappeared yeah. So that was a wall of sound that hit you like you wouldn't expect it. It was sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I can't imagine what the tens or twelves were like. You Apparently know, that, even more that ridiculous. Been, yeah, that, that much more. Orders of magnitude louder. Louder. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. It's it's not gonna come back to that. I mean I'm 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 already like satisfied with with what I get from F one now, like as a as an entertainment. And even going to the track like now like i don't i don't think i'm missing much but th- by this point like it would be nice it mm-hmm. would be cool all like you know it would like bring out like some of that like you know eight-year-old like wow <laughs> just <laughs> if, for it to be louder yeah if it was louder but the fact that it doesn't doesn't bother me like much anymore. I, I gotta be honest yeah. i liked being able to have a conversation with somebody yeah. <laughs> and yeah. actually talk about what's going on we were saying that in canada it's almost the perfect volume you could just kind of like talk loud to the person beside you it's like concert hear. level like yeah, like pretty pretty much concert like, yeah, level. just yeah exactly. just the right amount yeah yeah, yeah. you're sort of like i don't know more of like a high-tech sound now i guess you just hear the turbos whirring there's, and the electric sounds and the, rege- lev- the several, regeneration sounds. several layers of <laughs> sound happening yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah it's all yeah, the, yeah. The t- you can actually hear the tires a little bit sometimes now over the engine, you can hear, you hear more the, of a, more of a wheels. difference too in between the different engines and how yeah. even some teams that are running the same engine, they can sound like quite different. Mm-hmm. Like who knows what they're yeah. doing? Like are they ha- are they harvesting right now? Are they not? you know? Yeah. Really cool. For for those yeah, that yeah. haven't, oh my man, you gotta you, you gotta make it to Montreal though one year. Person. Montreal's amazing. Like for uh, like, the well, race, we're we're actually planning on it either this year coming up or next. If so. it happens, if it happens anymore. <laughs> 
Well, didn't they just sign a new contract a couple of years ago for eight mm. years or something? But that included a, a, uh, like a, a promise. Like, yeah, a promise to invest forty million dollars in track facilities, the pits, uh, medical facility, and a few other small things that okay. haven't been done. Oh, okay. The tickets are not for sale yet, and yeah. uh, usually, like, so we've been going for a few years in a row, and like, usually, like the day after, like the like the Monday after yeah. the Grand Prix, you'll get an email. Basically, from from the people that from the organizers saying like, "Hey, you, did you know that tickets for next year are on sale? Like, well, yeah, why don't you, why don't you buy some? Why don't you buy some?" But they, they didn't do that this year, and and apparently like uh, the people were uh, at the circuit were contacted, like somebody like called them. And yeah, they we said, read like, read a quote <clears throat> from an article earlier today that they called the circuit asking for tickets, and they said uh, we don't actually know if the race is going to happen. And the mayor, oh. the mayor of Montreal, came out and said uh, not to worry, but also there's no answers yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's, I don't know. that's not a good sign. Although from what I've heard the uh the paddock there is one of the tightest on uh, of the season. It is. Yeah, and it's old. And it's like it it's looks really everything old. looks like it's still from the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like Very... the set of Jurassic Park. Or yeah, or the, <laughs> <laughs> the tall fences and concrete yeah, yeah. <laughs> concrete walls, yeah. I think Justin's going to have to cough up some cash though. Yeah. For the he's, to happen. he's from Montreal. He, 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 he should. He should honestly. Like, I, I don't understand like why this is not like a more widespread like sentiment. And I think I can see like how like some people wouldn't like to support like the frivolous the frivolous world of F one and like burning <laughs> burning gas for fun. But <laughs> but but I I genuinely believe that like Canadian as a Canadian, every Canadian should be proud of the Canadian Grand Prix. Oh, it's yeah. a fantastic event, a great venue, it's and huge. some of the gigantic. some of the most historic moments in the history of one of the most important international sports have happened here in fact yeah. i would go as far as to say because it was the case for myself before i moved to canada that some people out there only ever hear about canada once a year during the grand prix <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah they don't call it the wall of champions for nothing right? exactly you know? yeah. 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 yeah 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 it's got that going for it <laughs> 100 p what do you think of this race coming up like who do you think it's gonna favor oh Prophesize for us. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's uh, it's it's gonna be interesting. Um, Hockenheim is 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 it's it's an Different. interesting track. It, it's mostly high speed, uh, but I mean, we saw Williams. What was it? Two years ago now, I guess, because we yeah, didn't have yeah, Derby yeah. last Bottas year. Bottas was up there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well. They, they didn't do so well in the wet, though, so, you know, yeah. I don't know. I, I've got a soft spot for Williams, but I think, everybody I, I think does. it's going to be the Mercedes <laughs> show again, sadly. Yeah. <laughs> Louis, another another Lewis Fest, maybe? Or... Well, see, I, I, I don't even have a problem with Mercedes. I just like seeing a battle. I yeah. like seeing, you know, even if Mercedes was earning it every weekend and, you know, really, you know, really having to fight, then... I wouldn't be so so upset, but uh, I, I like seeing I like seeing different winners and you know yeah. a more even a more yeah. even contest. Yeah, you might see Lewis get booed again, perhaps. <laughs> in, in Germany, I don't think so. Probably not. Oh. Perhaps, perhaps there'll be like a, <laughs> a silly Brits and they're booing. <laughs> <laughs> I I I hope not. I I hope they don't boo. Yeah, Lewis I hope then. that's over yeah. with. That, that was that was stupid. <laughs> it's it's not it's not very tasteful at all. No, no. Nico is hardly German either. <laughs> That's, he's he's yeah. Germanish. He's only a little German, and everybody kind of knows that. But he yeah. wasn't even racing for Germany during his karting career. Oh really? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. He, yeah. He, he raced for Finland. Finland, yeah. Because that's his his dad's nationality. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Finland. Oh. Finland. <laughs> But no, yeah, what, what you say is true, and it hasn't happened really this year. Like it's it's the same reason that Vettel is is probably all like angry and like maybe even looking at a Mercedes contract for 2018. This yeah. by this time, and and actually by the end of the Hungarian race last year, the, the Ferrari were looking really good, and they were looking like they were on up and up. By then, um, yeah. Vettel had won his second race of of the year last year. By, like at this point, there's only been three winners: Nico, Ro Nico Rosberg, Lewis, and 18-year-old <laughs> Max Verstappen. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, but that's it, right? Like, and he, and you could you could say that he was only there because both Mercedes took each other out. 
If not, it probably, most likely, it would have been another Mercedes win for that uh, for the Spanish Grand Prix. So, mm. really, yeah. we we are seeing like one of like the most like, severe dominations of the sport mm. right now. Yet, thank goodness, we've just been well, we've been lucky that we've had some good on track action like in the midfield. It, it's gotten a lot better in the midfield than mm. uh, than previous years. I know you know it was really bad back when Vettel was dominating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, when he won, what was that? Nine races in a row. He won everything from the summer break right to the end of the season. Yeah, and like, and and most <laughs> sessions he was like number one for from FP one all the way to the end of the race, you like know. just fastest. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's gotten a lot better in the midfield. Yeah, um, just just before you called, we were just saying, up until the halfway point now of the season, there's been 38 more overtakes than there was uh, this in the dry races only than there was all of last season. The, the the question is though, and that's good. It's great seeing more on track action. But yeah. how much of it is from tires, um, and, uh, and new to, tire strategy? To me, it doesn't right? even matter. Which that being said, it's been great to see the new tire rules come in. Man. Yeah, they're they're a real breath of fresh air. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Next year is going to be pretty crazy with those tires. Just, they're adding another just compound. Forget about knockout qualifying or the, the like the stuff oh, they no, had earlier. We don't we don't mention that. I, <laughs> is I, that confirmed I bet... now? The sixth compound? Or are you talking about the X wets? No, no, yeah. I, I, yeah, I guess I'm talking about the X wets. X wet. Well, in uh, between wet. No, yeah, they were they were gonna introduce like a new a new compound anyway, right? Like that was on the schedule to, to introduce one for next year. Yeah, there was yeah there was rumors about a sixth dry tire. Oh God, that would that not, <laughs> that all, might the, be a bit too much. The ultra hard. <laughs> They, they mentioned it themselves. <laughs> it might oh, be happening. Man. They wanted six for this year, but I think they compromised on five. But the ultra softs or the sorry the the super the super duper softs. Yeah, the, the ultras. Yeah, the purples. <laughs> uh, they're they've been lasting pretty pretty, well, pretty yeah, long. Yeah, for, yeah. Remember when when like people know. people people were like, oh man, those stars are gonna, gonna go last like five laps. five laps. Yeah, yeah. Four, four or five laps. But it, but that was that was the promise, right? Like they were gonna last. Five laps, but give you two seconds advantage, and yeah, like neither was, neither yeah, of yeah. those things have happened. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> but but it hasn't been so bad either. No, they haven't been. No, no, but uh, it's been great seeing the new tire rules. They're they're <laughs> the the new strategies have been great. Uh, it's been a lot it's more creative, been a lot better. I think for following a race, you know. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, and 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 teams have, are having to get a bit creative sometimes. It gives like room for um, even Mike was yeah Mike you were pointing this out. So some of the back markers are, are choosing like the hardest compounds consistently because then then they know what they have to do. Just stay out as long as possible, and that creates some like it's it's created some nice shuffles. Mm -hmm. At at the end of the day, like you said, yeah, maybe from like first to seventh. People are still like doing pretty good, but then everything after that is still like one lap, two laps uh, behind. Yeah. But still, like it's it's we don't we have no clear like back back marker like like Marusha was last year, right? Yeah, like no. there's no there's no like like even even at the back markers like the, the bottom two teams, two three teams are having like a pretty good scrap, and. And that's good. Even Haas has fallen back, but they kind of just gave up on. Well, not gave up. They're focusing on next year. They're getting their their race craft down, mm -hmm. I guess, instead of their car. They're just sticking with their current car. So they, but they got they scored points in the beginning, right? They came in with a strong car, and then they yeah. just didn't bother to to upgrade it. I guess they focused on their pit stops and their strategy and all that stuff. Now you got a step in between. Now you got to think that I mean, Gunter Ste Gunter Steiner. He is <laughs> not a dumb guy. <laughs> Right, he's 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 he's, he's he, he probably knew what like exactly what was going to happen. Overly practical man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> overly German, <laughs> uh, and and he probably like sold the idea to 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 Gene. Uh, this is this what to start it, the team in the first place. Yeah, to start the team in the first place. But like you know, they probably at one point they would have had to have had a sit down and discussed. Okay, so what's realistic? Like mm. even if we give it full beans, what's realistic for us? To like you know like like are we gonna say like are we even gonna have any points this season? Mm -hmm. And if a conservative and rational Gunter Steiner might have even said, you know what, man, if we get into the points once or twice, like not only would that be really good, like in terms of like publicity and and, and all the added benefits, 
but also that will actually cover like our target budget. Mm -hmm. So if they know, like if they knew already from the get go that all they had to do was get this this amount of points, right, uh, to be guaranteed to like to balance the budget at the end of the year, and they already got those points, like. You know, a few races back when when Roman put it in the in, in fifth and sixth. I remember you said then, it. Yeah. Then then they're then they're laughing. Like they could just be like like then then their conversation right now could very well be like, all right, do we, should we just throw this year, just keep racing and focus on the next year? Okay, and because we one, have the money. The one thing they did really well there was hiring Roman. Mm. Uh, you know, yeah. that's one thing that none of the three teams that came in and, and were back markers did was hire. A good driver, mm -hmm. you need to take the driver out of the equation. You need somebody who's going to bring the car home, mm -hmm. turn good yeah. laps, and let them develop the car and give good feedback to the engineers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, by doing that, they put themselves in a good position to get those points. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? To be able to capitalize, like, on the mm -hmm. yeah on the, on the the randomness that was happening at the first year, at, at the beginning of the year, yeah. Didn't you, <clears throat> I forget the details of this. We said something around Australia that... Uh... Haas had some kind of deal with DHL as well. If they had scored points at the beginning, then they would cover their logistics for the season, something oh, like no, that. Yeah, we brought that up. Yeah, they, yeah, I don't they, remember the details. They had, Isn't it, yeah, they they had scored some... points in the first race or in the first three races or something? No, no, like that? it's, it's, uh, yeah, it was, that deal I think was like sort of made in place with, by Bernie. Like, it was like Bernie had some sort of like a. Just to help him out a little bit? Yeah, yeah to, to help to him get off the ground. Him. And they, and they secured that because they did get the yeah. points. So and it, yeah, so th maybe that maybe they're sure just as well. maybe they're just not very concerned about this year because they don't have like a legitimate um, reason to be. You know what I mean? They know yeah. they know that they're not. If they know, if, but that, well, that's Haas smart himself thing to do. said at the start too yeah. that he's he's here. He's hoping to stay for the long haul, and they want to bring slowly as much as they can their manufacturing to the United States, have it all based there, and build a proper racing team. So yeah, hopefully he sticks around. It seems like that's his plan, though. Yeah. Good, yeah. good for him. Good for good, good for the sport. Really, yeah, super good. Yeah. Now, I think we are also like now like in on the eve of like another like great like resurgence of the sport. Uh, I think I think like the sport is like well placed. Like you know, have something good going on. Like we've had some great racing already this year. Mm -hmm. Has been like very very exciting to watch. We like except for like maybe we've had two boring races. Whereas like in the past, by this point, like if we had like two really exciting races, like like you were happy, right? Like you're like oh man, like. <laughs> but so we've had two two boring races. Even though the battle at the front like is is not as it should be, but it's still being like an amazing sport. Then we're having all this like new blood coming in. Even this wasn't a boring weekend. Qualifying was awesome. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And in particular here in Canada, it could like it could be getting even more of an enticing opportunity for new fans because we might have a, a driver, if not two, in mm -hmm. F1 in, in, in the coming years. And if if anything, doing a practice coverage now. TSN picking up the sky yeah. coverage is yeah, is that's huge. Cool. Oh yeah, it's huge. Ab know? Absolutely, no. That was uh, we we had. Uh, uh, we were lucky enough and had the opportunity to chat with uh, Tim Horaney. Yeah. He's the guy at TSN that basically handles all their F1 stuff. And he said that he himself had been pushing for a long time because they what they had before was that the BBC, but they only did like they did no pre-show or barely a pre-show, yeah. maybe like half yeah, an hour or something. Like cut in as the race started yeah. and that's yeah. it. Yeah. Whereas and now, cut like, away as soon as the podium was over, done. But now they have everything, yeah. which is which is fantastic, and it's good because a good quality coverage matters for new fans. It has to be like if yeah. if okay, you can't have, yeah, you can't start with basic coverage because okay. you won't understand what's happening. Exactly, like but but think back of like I think it was this would have been for Brazil 2012. So here's here's what happened. We so we we had been getting together kind of like I guess uh, how you do did with uh, with your buddies up in uh, your life. Um, just in in our play, in, like, at our houses, like to watch the race uh, every once in a while and whatever. And we were we, we thought, you know what, the last race of the year is Brazil. That's in our time zone, pretty much. We can watch it live. We can go to a bar and watch it live. We we thought like hell, like this is the freaking Canada's biggest city. We're gonna have like we we should be able to find a bar, one bar yeah. out there that's playing F one. None. Nope. 
not not a single one and then when we went to like one of the bars here that like they advertise that they have the most screens or whatever like the most like sports on like it was a freaking fight to get them to put the f1 in the one first place. one television that, one of your screens put on the race for us it's, that meant, and it's they cut out the start of it because wow. golf was on or something yeah yeah something not only like that, that then then we actually had to like manually turn the volume up after they told us not to put the volume up yeah, we couldn't but, hear anything but then we we're trying to buy some beer at the establishment yeah but but then here's here's the other thing that happened back then tsn whatever like the the numbers were in there whatever but prior to the race there was yeah there was like a golf or something that ended up going over time or like extending it oh. might have been whatever you know, it was whatever it was Tennis so or something. Something. they cut the first five minutes of the race the start of the race man <laughs> like so if you were a if you were a, a, a fan looking to get into f1 and you stumble upon that like what would you think yeah, yeah. yeah. garbage yeah you'd be like i'm not checking exactly. this out ever again so that's why a good quality coverage matters man yeah luckily they have somebody like tim now who's helping push it push it the right way well and also like the, a lot better the increased viewership has helped them apparently there is an actual they've they done their research they, they looked at the numbers and and tsn decided to go for that because there is a renewed interest thanks to guys That's like awesome. you man honestly like no there's got to be a whole no seriously there's I'm just a guy but you know. no but but serious like if it, so you said that you have a, you, you got a couple of your friends into f1 or like to at least like check it out consider you know watching a race or two if everybody that's like a fan of F1 out there is doing the same, I yeah. think that 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 like it'll it'll just help the cause. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. It only can. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um so any any plans of checking out Toronto anytime? Uh no. Uh, not yet, <laughs> unfortunately, but I will be sure to be at Betty's when I am in Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See? Definitely. It's, it uh, was actually I, a lot of fun. I, I saw that and I'm like, that looks awesome. That looks awesome. Like, you're what you guys set one up in for. Calgary now. <laughs> well, that's, find a bar. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find the my little F1 community here. But yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's certainly it's certainly something I'd consider if we had a few people. Yeah, so, I'm sure you can find them over there. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right, man. It was uh, it was it was great to talk to you. Yeah, for uh, sure. Thanks for finally. We'll, let's yeah, yeah let's uh, let's keep in touch. Let's do another one of these. Uh, hopefully later on uh, yeah. towards uh, towards the end of the year, and figure out the how the, how how the sport has changed. It's it, we still have a whole half of the season ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's it's the awesome. incredible part. Yeah, and, it's awesome. You know, who knows what'll happen? <laughs> Maybe they'll crash out nine races in a row. They'll Maybe. Crash oh my goodness! <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> the F1 priest has spoken. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. Have a okay, good well, one. Thanks, thanks for lot, calling. Guys. Thank you, my father. <laughs> Bye. Oh man. <laughs> that was a fun conversation. That yeah. was great. What a great guy. Pushing F1. To the point that that his fiance is waking him up for qualifying. Oh. <laughs> God damn! <Brilliant. laughs> oh man, it sounds like a dream. Yeah. <laughs> what were we talking about before? <laughs> German Grand Prix or something? <laughs> yeah, the German Grand Prix. Uh, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Hey, can we check out these uh, trophies? This 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 bottom one. It's just to finish off, I guess. It's the last thing I got. Yeah. But I, I found uh, somebody put up a gallery of. The Hungarian trophies over the years, beautiful. Oh man, yeah, they're very cool, right? It's ninety-one, two, and ninety-five. But uh, yeah, they've—I guess they they've been traditionally like... been all porcelain. Wow, gold porcelain. Holy crap! There's Ayrton man. Senna's. That's awesome. a PK nineteen eighty-seven. There's one here for the That's first. Badass. That one's too, that one's marked for the first race eighty-six. Oh wow. It's actually the same as the Toronto Indy. This was the uh, the 30th anniversary. That wasn't pushed at all this weekend. The 30th Hungarian Grand Prix. Oh, really? They didn't even mention it. Huh. <laughs> yeah, oh, right. 80, yeah, yeah. 86 it would be. was the first. Yeah. There actually, there was, like, remember we said there was like two other ones in the 1930s or something? Mm -hmm. Downtown or something. Oh, yeah. But all these are beautiful. Wow. That's Very amazing. cool. Something different, right? Yeah. Most of them have like uh, 
remember one off they're all usually bespoke metal like yeah. the shape of the track something local. remember when when santander was like crazy sponsoring like grand prix and all the trophies in europe were the same <laughs> that was fucked yeah <laughs> yeah pretty pretty much like anyway. the uh there's a picture here of danny rex though from this race that uh not it's it's on the, the thing there but his the base of his kind of fell off <laughs> i don't know if it broke or not i couldn't find a picture of it broken or not but uh yeah there's so there's the base on it has like the the f1 logo mm-hmm. the, the other picture of the base off it fell off <laughs> <laughs> but, but i just like took appa- like hot glue gun and <laughs> yeah I, I didn't go back and find it but apparently on the uh yeah there it is <laughs> i don't know if it's smashed or what but apparently on the broadcast you could see it just kind of fall off <laughs> <laughs> the condensation man maybe <laughs> he's all sweaty yeah, so like that, that, that looks kind of like an urn, though. Doesn't yeah, it? yeah, bit. they do kind of look urnish. <laughs> See, the lid didn't fall off, though. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> he should have drank his champagne out of that. Yeah, that's what I would have done. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> one for you, <laughs> one for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, I guess with that, uh, with that, we can close it. Pretty much good, it. Yeah. Couple, couple good interview. I like these little interview shows. Oh, what they're they doing? fun. Yeah. yeah, aren't they? Yeah, a lot of links and in interviews today. All right, guys. Fun stuff. We'll see you next week after the German Grand Prix. Germany. The German review. <laughs> we'll be back. Play us out, please. I'm Thank trying. Uh, check us out. Flatofever.com. Flatofever.com. And, Twitter, if you, tweet, and if you and if you like and if you like this song, listen to bamboo.com. When are you guys playing next? August sixth. Nice. August sixth. Yeah. There Lee's Palace. Swiss. Lee's Sick. Palace? Yeah. Alrighty. <laughs> see you guys. Cool.